ahead and uh, call our March 12th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is uh, the approval of minutes from our January and February meetings. Commissioners, y'all got those via email as well as on your desks. Um, are there any changes that need to be made? If not, I'll accept a motion for the January minutes. Just, okay, I've got January listed on here as well. Just February. That explains why I've got one stack here. Um, do I have a motion to approve so the moved. February 4th minutes as requested? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, passes unanimously. Uh, first item on the agenda, SD 1911, a public hearing to consider the request of Montrose property for a final plat approval for Fox Hollow Phase 2, a 59 lot subdivision. Buford? Hey, Mr. Chairman, thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. We have leading off tonight a routine final plat approval. As the Chairman said, this is case number SD 19.11. Uh, um, if you see it's the top item on your agenda. And this is a routine final plat approval for Fox Hollow Phase 2. I'll call your attention to the first slide. You see the zoning map on your left, the aerial photograph on your right. You'll notice the orientation of the property to Fox Hollow Phase 1, which enters from Morphe, which enters from Morphe Avenue. You see this is on the southern end of uh, Phase 1, which is currently fully engaged in home construction. You'll see that the engineer of record is listed at the bottom of the slide, Hutchison, Moore, and Rowell, on behalf of the developer, Montrose Properties. We'll give some brief reiteration to the commission on the subdivision itself. You'll see the case number at top, which is where the preliminary plat was approved in December of 2017. You'll see the basic statistics of the development there in the center of your slide. What I will call out to the commission is note the green space totals in the center of your page right there. So you'll see a majority of the green space for the development was accomplished in phase one. It was supplemented with a small amount in phase two that attains overall compliance with the subdivision regulations for green space. This is, of course, zoned R2 medium density single family. Uh, Mr. Tim Lolly is with us tonight uh, on behalf of the uh, engineering firm. Uh, just a brief look at the actual uh, plat for which we're requesting a recommending approval to the commission. And so you see the various lots uh, requested by the uh, final plat. Uh, we'll just review briefly here the criteria for final plat approval. Uh, the customary requirements of video inspections of the infrastructure was provided. The various bonding requirements are noted there in the center of the slide, which were furnished as required, as well as the various testing requirements of the infrastructure. Also, the aid to construction fees for the uh, street lights, which in this case are provided by Riviera Utilities. That was paid as appropriate, and those street lights are in place at this time. Again, a routine final plat approval, so the staff recommendation is approval. Commissioners, you'll see there are two conditions of approval, and you'll notice that uh, item one is a very routine text edit, which is not uncommon to discover a need for a text edit when we're preparing a final plat application. And then item two is a housekeeping request of the water and sewer department, which is a common uh, condition of approval we request when dealing with lift stations to make certain they have the proper warranty, that the warranty initiation is uh, meets the desires of uh, Fair Oak Public Utilities Water Sewer Department. Um, as we said, Mr. Lawley with HMR is here. If you have any questions for the engineer, I'm happy to answer any questions for staff. Anybody have questions for Buford while he's here? Thank you, Buford. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody have any comments or wish to speak to Fox Hollow out at the end of Morphe Avenue? Chairman, I'll put the map back up there for everyone's benefit. If not, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, Tim, are you here? I don't. Yeah, Tim is back there. If you have any questions for the engineer, um, commissioners. Any questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move that we approve case number SD19.11 Fox Hollow Phase 2. Uh, final plat. Substitute staff. Substitute staff recommendations. Excuse me. 
Okay. I've got second. a motion and a second by Richard to approve subject to staff recommendations. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda, public hearing to consider a request of the Teachers Retirement Systems of Alabama to establish an initial zoning of tourist resort condition upon annexation into the city of Fairhope. This property is approximately 99.15 acres located south of Twin Beach Road and west of South Section Street. Uh, one thing I will mention to anybody in the audience, um, this is a request of theirs to bring property that they already own into a current zoning of a PUD that they have, or actually a zoning district that they have. And it's only for the 95.15 acres that they have. It won't bring anybody else's property uh, into the city limits. Now, if your property is contiguous to that property and you would want to be granted, you know, uh, annexation, you can simply request that to the city and they'll grant you that annexation. But this is only uh, requesting that the RSA bring in 99.15 acres that they actually own and no one else's land. So uh, that's what we have before us. So Nancy. All right. Um, I think you covered a lot of it. Uh, mainly I wanted to stress that this is all low rise uh, development as it's proposed right now. Um, and the current allowed number of uses on the existing 184 acres of TR district property is 637. The applicant is proposing an additional um, 224 units on the 99.15 acres being conditionally annexed. The additional property being annexed has a density of 2.26 units per acre. Um, and once the, um, the overall development of the colony is a master planned community design um, development in its entirety with a special overlay district which affords certain exceptions that it has private streets and um, that kind of thing. The uh, individual phases of this development will be reviewed for compliance with the TR district standards at each of those phases um, at the time of subdivision. Also, um, We've checked for the adequacy of public infrastructure with Mr. Uh, Richard Peterson, and he said the city's infrastructure with the improvements we have planned will support the 224 units that are proposed. Um, there are some wetlands on this property, and the applicant is currently working with the Corps of Engineer on these. And um, the site is located within, once once they annex in, it'll be within the city of um, Fairhope corporate limits, the permit jurisdiction and police jurisdiction and um, planning jurisdictions. And uh, again, I mentioned they will evaluate the um, traffic will be one of the components they look at at the individual phases of the development as it progresses. And I believe that's it. Staff is in recommendation um, to support this. The, Nancy, um, the density of this compared to, and I hate to put you on the spot like this, mm -hmm. but the density of this compared to the original PUD, is it pretty equivalent? Oh, hold on. I think I have that in here. <coughs> did you? Did yes, you it actually density? goes down from 3.5 was the original, and then when they add this property into it, it will actually drop to three units per acre. Is that okay. Where okay. That's yeah, I did address Any that. Any other questions for Nancy while she's up here? Did it, am I missing, was there a, a breakout of the density for the low rise area being proposed? As well, opposed that, to that is the two, 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 Okay. Yeah. And by the way, commissioners, this is a, you know, bringing this in to the PUD is not necessarily, because they have the PUD, we don't have to say, you know, yes, we'll allow private streets or this density or what have you, this is something new to be looked at, you know, on its own merits. So remember, just because we've approved a put in the past doesn't mean that we have to approve this or, you know, approve it as it is. This is a new presentation that, you know, we're looking at on its own merits. Okay. 
And are we considering both of these cases separately, the annexation and rezoning is one thing, and then the, the second case is its own? The yes, the second phase is the subdivision, the first, the phase six, which would be the first phase of this, mm -hmm. but it will be um, conditional upon this annexation is how we have it. Okay. Right. All right. Um, Tim, do you have anything to add at this time before I open the public hearing? All right, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. This is for the RSA property uh, at the Colony of the Grand. Are there any questions or concerns? If you do, um, just please come up to the microphone and state your uh, name and your address and try to keep your comments to three minutes if you can. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There was a letter that I, I'm assuming that Emily might have given this to you. I just received it. So yeah, it apparently came in yesterday, but I, I have not had a chance to look at it. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name is Helen Hall, and I have property on Henshaw Road, right below where they're going to put this. Mm -hmm. My concern is when they start digging that out to do whatever they want to do that drainage is going to come down on us are they going to do something to c contain that to keep that wash because we're at the bottom of that hill and that's always been a hill i've always lived there most of my life and the water comes off that hill and it comes down and it lands on us then where they have been going in to do what they've been doing already, topping that hill on Twin Beach, how are they going to get in and out of there? How they, is that the main? Is that going to eventually be the main entrance for them coming in and out of there? Because, in all honesty, we know we can't do anything about it because that's already been approved. We don't want it. That's more traffic. We're the ones that's going to have to deal with this. And it is wetlands there. It is. And I'm on Henshaw, and it's wetlands there. And people will come in and say anything to get what they want. But where my house is, it was wetlands also. And the city of Fair Fairhope said you could never build on it. Now it's two houses there and two sheds. So something needs to be done to assure us that we're not going to end up. Because once y'all put that stuff in there and leave out of here, we're the ones that's going to have to deal with that. And that's what i got to say about right. it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Anybody else wish to speak to this? And by the way, I'll, the engineer will come up in a few moments. Um, right now, we're not getting into the engineering as far as the water retention or the ingress egress yet. Um, that'll come later when they bring the subdivision plans to us. This we're actually looking at the zoning itself. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, my name is Joyce Tarbert. <laughs> my name is Joyce Tarbert. And Laura Ash. And um, we have property that's kind of adjacent to it. And really, the address? the address is um, our address is 1906 Ocedo Lane. Can I, can I point out just so they know? Yes. I'll <coughs> point it out. Four lots right at the very top, like right there, right behind the church. Mm -hmm. That's where they are. Yes, that's what that's the yeah, I live in Daphne. Oh, okay. Yes, they own these four properties, which at this time are unknown. Yes, ma'am. But, but we have lived there all our life, and uh, Miss uh, Helen just spoke. Our concern is about what's going on, because really I'm new to this about, you know, what are you going to do? I know it's your property and everything, but what are you going to do for us, for us to know what's going on? So can we talk with someone to see what's going on, what y'all plan to do? You plan to put in houses or uh, what is it really that you plan on doing and how is it going to affect? Because my concern, too, is about the drainage. What is going to happen 
well, all these houses, it didn't seem like you said you're going to put in additional housing on top of what's already recommended for you to do. So I would like to see a study, if I could, before the city decide what you're going to do for us so we will know because we are kind of close right to what, and I admit that I'm not good at reading maps and anything, so I like to sit down and talk with the group to see what's what, so I'll know what's what, and then y'all let us know, so we'll know how it's going to affect our property, since we're not coming into the city, and y'all are coming into the city, how would that affect us? Okay, I will say that, that we have now in our process, just so y'all are aware, a pre-application meeting, which they had on phase six, um, but if you are within adjacent property owners, as that phase comes in, like the, the phase that will be right next to your property, the engineer of record will send out notification to all adjacent property owners for a pre-application meeting so that y'all can look at the plans, address your concerns with the engineer of record. So there is a process for that is what I wanted to assure you. Okay. Well, what is going on now? Could you say phase six? So how many phases? The next, so, can so, it, can the next item on the agenda is going to be the next item on the agenda is going to actually show the engineering have to do with the water retention of the and the entrance and the exit portion for the bottom right section and the blue outline right there. Yeah. So e even though you know this is probably so it's already planned. Is it already planned for this to happen? What they are talking about at this moment is the zoning of the property, of whether right now it's unzoned. Right now it is unzoned. So what they're looking at is bringing it in and as that TR district that I talked to you about, the tourist mm -hmm. yeah. resort. And it's basically an overlay, but a designated zoning. So it'll be in the city of Fairhope corporate limits is what they're talking about right now. Okay. So... Forgive me for not understanding, but there's not been a proposed plan for the property that they're bringing in yet. Okay. For the a small portion of it, the next item small. on the agenda will be, you know, what they want to do with, you know, one phase of it, and then they'll be bringing back another phase and another phase and another phase as they complete those. So it'll the, be done in small sections. But the engineer, as soon as I, what I'm doing right now, I'm taking the questions mm -hmm. that that you all have and that anybody in the audience has <coughs> okay. and then Tim Lawley who's right behind you in the white shirt he's the engineer okay. he's going to come thank up and answer all of those questions okay but well, thank you I forgive that uh well I want to know will this force us to be annexed and if, if, if the city plan on annexing you know they get then that would that force us how would that annexation affect us. It doesn't affect you. Now, if you're not contiguous to the city limits at this point, um, and I'm not an attorney and don't know this, can yell if I'm saying something wrong, but as I know it under Alabama state law, if you're contiguous to city property, you can petition to be annexed and, and by right you can be annexed. So if your four lots are contiguous to this property and you haven't been contiguous to the city property before and you wish to be annexed, you can be. If you choose not to be, you just don't petition to be annexed. Is that right, Ken? Okay. And this won't affect our property going up by them being annexed. This is. Uh, that's another question I might. Uh, that's another question. That's another question for another day. As far okay. as what this does to your property values, it'll probably make your property values go up. Um, and if it does, you know, property taxes may go up, but that's probably better than property values going down. Most people like the property yeah. values to go up, but that's, well, my main that, that's not in our purview. Is, yeah, well, my that's main concern is what uh, the first lady address is the drainage, I, because how is that going to affect our property? So that's the main concern. Yes, that and thank you for listening and letting me you know directly. Well, they also are required to advertise this. So if you see it, just come up to the planning department and meet one of us to help you. Okay. Yeah, and um, also, like sh she said, we don't want it because, uh, you know, what they're trying to plan and develop, because all the traffic flow and all that stuff, where would the traffic be going, you know, in and out? You know, already we don't have all that traffic, you know. Like we stay in the country, you know, it's mellow, yeah. low, all that stuff. But when you come and put all that in there, it's a population. So we don't, we don't want it, no. All right, thank you.
Thank you all for listening. Yes, ma'am. Uh, anybody else wish to speak to this item? Yeah, I want to say that. Okay. You and me. Mm. My name is Lonzy Bettis. I live on 19103 Wilson Lane. And my, my question is, City of Fairhope, City of Daphne, all these cities know what the problem is. They already sewage problem here in Fairhope. Now, I live where I live at. I'm on a system that cost me, I think, a couple of years ago, it cost me about four or five thousand dollars to, to put the new system in. Now, what I can understand now, that same system gonna cost anywhere from twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. And it just seems like to me the city just trying to force people like me and everybody, the homeowners, to where they get just got to almost get rid of their property. You know, it's just a shame the way the, the way the city is like doing things. I don't. I ain't got nothing get no progress, but it's wrong for somebody to come in, they look, come in, and want to buy some property next to me. They already see I've been there all my life. And they want to come in and build something next to me and tell me how I should live at where I where I've been all my life. Th that's my problem. What what I got wrong with it? It's got to be a stop somewhere. Long years ago, y'all people up here didn't want didn't even want to be out there where we at. They didn't want us up in Fairhope. <laughs> now they, they, don't, they, want, they, don't, they don't, almost don't want us where we've been born and raised at. Somewhere it's got to be an end to this. Yes. Right. Now Fairhope know, and I know too, I've been here six to some odd years. Every time it rains, they put false information in the paper that the, the water flowed and the sewage out. Everybody know what's going on here. We're here in Fairhope and Dad. So I ain't got nothing against progress, but I just I just feel like that we be staying forced up on us in the area where we've been all our lives that we don't don't even want. Yeah. <coughs> so that's that's my thing. All right. Thank Amen. you, Mr. Bellis. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening. My name is Thelma Todd, and I don't live on Twin Beach Road, but I grew up here in Fairhope, and my concern is my church is on Twin Beach Road. And the reason I want to say something is, did she say that the property is behind a church? Is it Twin Beach AME Zion Church? Yes. 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 The property, the, the square with the four little lots beside it, below it, it doesn't back up to this property. There's Okay, um, when it rains, that church, because it sits up like on a hill, and the water does run down and runs across to where her property, I have relatives who live on Twin Beach Road, and my concern is about the drainage, and what a lot of people Echoing what the gentleman said is before there was a Fairhope, there was a black community called Tatumville here. And um, the properties are from our ancestors until today. And so this is the first that I've heard about this project. Yeah. My thing is why was not something in the churches you know, everybody, all the older, the seniors, they don't have computers. They don't text. So they don't find out about uh, these meetings. And it just so happened that I was talking to someone and she was telling me about this meeting. So that's why I rushed up to see what was going on because I was told about this project on Twin Beach Road. So it should be a, a better way of communicating with families that live on Twin Beach Road and adjacent lanes or, uh, or streets or whatever. You know, so this is phase six, you're saying? We didn't know anything about phase one through five. Amen. So you need to do something better 
uh, and a lot of people, like you were saying, they don't want this project, supposed, especially if it's going to have an adverse effect on our community and my church. And there's another church up further, you know. So I think you all need to really, really do a better job of communicating about what's going on. Because we found in the past that something has been in place 20 years ago, and we don't get information until um, maybe a year before they actually are going to do the project. So I live on 111th Diastrahan, D-E-S-T-R-E-H-A-N Road in Fairhope. But I grew up here. OK. I just need a OK. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Don. Uh, anyone else wish to speak to this item? Good evening. Uh, my name is Reverend Terrence Jackson. I live at 19140 Wilson Lane. My main concern is, you talked about some of it, but in our community, we have a lot of kids in there. And the school buses have come down through there. And on top of that hill, it's very dangerous. People are always flying and flying. I, and I feel it's going to be a terrible accident there. And also, communication. Nobody contacted the leaders in the community. Uh, we had phase six, and I'm all for progress, but I'm all for righteousness as well. Nobody contacted none of the leaders in the communities about well, what was going on. out for 30 days. And watch this. You, you all sent several letters to different houses. Several letters. One house may get one, skip six houses. Another house may get one, skip eight houses. That's not communication. What I'm saying is, we have churches and communities. We have pastors. I'm a pastor as well. Get the information out. We can tell the people in the communities. You know, just pop stuff up. That property we're talking about is right off of Twin Beach. Now, they put a driveway right in when you turn on Wilson Lane. I watched them build that in and out of there, and it almost was traffic trouble then. Imagine when y'all go to phase seven, eight, and nine, what's going to happen? Mm. I opted out to live in a community, in, in a subdivision. I brought that property down in where I am. But it seems like now, we all going to be in a subdivision. I want some communication. It's that hard to ask. That the people will know. Stuff just won't pop up on them. Sure. Emily, can you get his email address and put him on the list? We, we have an email um, item that goes out to all of the different uh, excuse me, we have an email item that goes out to all of the uh, different owners, associations, developers, anybody that's been to these meetings before and requests. And if you'll give your email address, you'll get those same emails that everybody else gets. There's a notification that goes out by law that requires 15 days for a sign to be out there. And it also requires that letters be sent to people within a certain distance. Now those letters go out based on tax records, which are only as good as they are updated. So, you know, nothing's perfect, but, you know, we try to keep everything as, as open and communicate as well as we can. And we have this uh, email list, I think, has about how many? 2,000, some crazy number of people it, on it. It's a lot. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll, we'll have you on that list. So, you'll get the Fairhope Planning agenda, you know, before the meetings, about a week before the meetings from here on out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yes, sir. Um, anybody else wish to speak? Good afternoon. My name is Isaac Houston. I live on uh, Cedar Lane, 19025. Uh, my concern is um, with the land that you developing my portion of my land. Once you annex this into the city, what effect that is going to have on my property that I own? One thing, I've been raised there 58 years. Okay, my dad had a hog farm. Mm -hmm. Say if I want to start a hog farm. I live in the country. You know, I'm going to be retired. <clears throat> so I'm looking at, I don't want your way of living to interfere with my way of living. Amen. 
I respect you, and all I'm asking is the same respect. You know, it, 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 uh, I got brothers and sisters living in, in that neighborhood, and we've been comfortable there. Our kids been living there. And um, your way of living is different from my way of living, like night and day. Be real about it. I didn't ask to come up in Fairhope and live in Fairhope. I live in Battle of Wolf. And, you know, I ask you to respect my neighborhood. Now, when you, when you bring your beautiful houses, I got beautiful trees right now. And what I look at is beautiful. And when you bring all your stuff that you say is beautiful, it might not be beautiful to me. So, you know, I'm just saying, what you see fit and what you're going to annex, you're going to do. But what I'm saying is, how, what's the effect by y'all letting annex and in the fair hole? Many a times you tried to annex us into Pharaoh and we pulled back. We didn't want to be annexed. So you're getting really close to where I live at. And I'm concerned about when you annex their property in the Pharaoh, my Jason property, what effect? Because right now I'm comfortable what I'm doing. You see, and I know after years go on, and go on, you going to start putting your little laws in. Yeah. And they're going to stipulate what I can do on yeah. my property. Yeah. Right. So this is why I love living in the country. Yeah. If I want to paint my house with color, I want to paint my house. It's my business. Yeah. And that's my concern. Don't bring your laws on us. Yeah. That's my concern, Pharaoh. Uh, I paid my taxes, and my concern is just like your concern when you have this big group of people coming in, and they're going to have their wants and their wheels, and you're bringing it on the, uh, the people. So um, my concern is... Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Houston, let me, let me mention something. And I think everybody knows that uh, you've got the right to do what you want to do with your property. You don't want to be in fair, that's your choice. The, the other thing on the other side of it, though, is any other landowner that's out there that has gone and put their money in their own property, they have a choice also. Uh, sure. And so what they do I'm not hopefully is not going to affect you to a great oh, degree. Yes, it, but it, it what will. you do also will, will probably well, have an effect on them. One thing about it, when they was talking about the water flow up under there, okay, we up on the hill, we got water that's flowing up under. When you go in there and you cut that hill, and you want to cut where them streams at, mm -hmm. what's the deal with that? Because when it rains hard, we can stand at the bottom. If you go to, if you go to Henshaw Road right now, you'll see at the end of Henshaw Road and, and, and 44 uh, there, where the sand is just washing out in the road already. I'm aware of that. I know. So. The streams that's up under there, when you cut to put your, when you, when, the, when you cut and cut that top of that hill, because see, it's not that deep the water run. We got where the, down there at um, where the creek is at. That streams come all the way from, all the way from Section Street. So when y'all start cutting up there, what effect, this is what my sister is concerned, what effect yeah. is going to have on us, the undercurrent? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, one other thing, and I've heard, I've heard it mentioned several times, this is the planning commission. Yes, it's sir. Not, it's not yes, sir. our property. It's not us that's doing the development. We're just here to, well, to, to look at what it is. But, it, but, but it's not y'all. It's not us that's doing any kind of construction or development, but we are responsible for overseeing the types of activities that the development undertakes. They've got rules and regulations that they've got to meet, and one of those paramount, one of those really important issues is water runoff control. I so if they cut the top of the hill off and, and, and uh, Niagara Falls runs out of it, they're going to be responsible for containing it. 
Okay. Well, what I'm saying, I understand what you are, and I understand you got an engineer here. And I want him to hear my concern. Okay. That's Very why good. I brought that up. Sure. I understand you are the, giving them right to be annexed into Fairhope. And I wanted you to know okay. my concerns of you giving him right to annex yeah. into Fairhope. I wasn't trying to combine it all together. Okay. But I know he was back there. And I wanted him to hear me. Um, that was my concern. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much, Susan. Let me say one thing. You know, this that we're looking at is a, uh, it is a PUD, which is a actual zoning. Uh, excuse me, not a PUD. It's to bring it into a zoning, which is the most similar zoning I've ever seen to a PUD. But it's to bring it into a certain zoning and to bring it into annexation. Um, whether we decide not to allow it to be annexed or not to allow it to bring it into that zoning, they've still got their private property rights where they could develop it in the county under the county rules. Um, so our, you know, we're not the gatekeepers saying, hey, sorry, y'all can't develop your land. As you understand, everybody, just as you've got a right to raise pigs on your land if you so desire, they've got a right to develop their land. And, you know, the, the city encroaches. And I remember when I was about five years old and my Uncle Marvin was getting very upset because his land over on the back side of Echo Lane, uh, they were making him run his horses off. And at the same time, uh, City Councilman Boone was gonna have to lose Muggsy the Goat out on Boone Lane because the city overgrew the land right there around Ivy Circle and Boone Lane and Echo Lane in that area that used to be the, considered the country then. I remember when cows were at Ingleside and I worked on the potato farm, uh, potato shed where, where uh, where now Ruby Tuesdays is, and as they say, the times are changing. And uh, Tata said out there, right? But anyway, so we can't stop them from developing, but we do have, you know, items in place such as water retention, uh, green space, things to try to make the developments as nice as possible. And I can't promise you that if a couple dozen highfalutin people come in and buy these lots and you have pigs or cows that they're not going to complain to the city and everybody else about you having them. I mean, that's just part of it. I remember when I was young and, you know, you went to Max's and you'd have the number four richest guy in the world eating oyster poor boy here talking to one of the two since about throwing cast nets and now that same place that had the best oyster poor boys is a private club that I'm not a member of. But anyway, it's just, you know, times do change and, and this area grows and what used to be the country is not the country anymore but yeah, our I tell you what. but, but we, we've got rules that we have to follow um, just a minute sir that okay. you'll have a ch chance um, but but we've got the rules that we have to follow and we when we look at this we look at is this a a basically does it meet the regulations or if we bring it in does this make a better offering than if we just live it out in in the county when you leave things in the county they don't have nearly the the requirements that things have in the city as far as when the developments are done. So, uh, you know, they can be commercially zoned, et cetera, which, you know, you may or may not be concerned about, but that's something that we certainly are concerned about. But does anybody else wish to speak to this item before I bring the engineer up? I, I want to say this, man, but I'll do one thing. Wait, wait, excuse me. You, you need to come you need up, come up to the speak, microphone. You need to come up again. I'm not supposed to let you speak again, but I will. But you need to come I, I up. I say this. One thing about in, in this area here, what doesn't happen here, that Alabama retirement system, that's who doing all this. Mm -hmm. they, are, they need to throw, go back up north somewhere, find them some property up there. Fairhope just, just about them got too big. You can't put New York in Fairhope. Yeah. And that's who behind this whole deal. Right. That Alabama retirement system. My wife and them got her little change in it. I, 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 didn't, I didn't wait for the system, so I don't have nothing at it, but that's who done it here, doctor. What that man name y'all know? Doctor, that's him. He need to come down here and live in this area. He wouldn't want it either. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Anybody else? If, if you've you got something new to say, please come up. Um, I'll let one or two more people speak, and then we've got to move on through the agenda. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say... Do you need to state your name and your my, my name is Joyce. I already, uh, Joyce Tarver. Okay. Well, after and this, I, you need to move on. So if you've had your chance, if it's something new, please say it. But we yeah, won't. I'm just going to be real quick and real brief. I, I understand 
uh, what what everybody's saying. And I understand, like I say, progress. And I understand that, you know, you said they're just a planning phase. I mean, just, she's just giving them annexation into the city. But, I mean, yes. But that do, still do affect our property because even though you, we all have the right to do what we want on our property because it's our private property. But by the city giving them the right to get the city amenities because that's what it's about, it still affects us whether and you affect us by giving them the right because if they don't get the right to have the city amenities then everything that they're planning it won't work out they, they get the city amenities whether they annex or not uh anybody else wish to speak to this item yes, uh, ma ma to I think you do. Your, your police protection Water. is from the city your uh, fire protection from the city. My dad liked staying out, out of the city limits where he lives on Battles Wharf because he likes having his water well and he likes burning his trash in his backyard. But he does think, have police protection. But well, go ahead, please. So I think address. one of the big concerns is that there's been absolutely no involvement in the community. And this is a huge development, 100 acres, 99 acres. And there has been, and this is a well-established community. And the only thing that I've seen in the notes and documents is that this is unzoned. I know. Our family has owned our land for generations. And I think a lot of people here who have adjacent, adjacent properties and neighborhoods have owned their land for generations. And it's been passed down from generation to generation. This is going to come in and completely change the quality of our lives, yeah. completely impact our day to day. It's going to increase the traffic. And then once this gets zoned, and I, you know, I agree that this probably needs to be rezoned into the city if this is what's going to happen, but we haven't seen a comprehensive plan. We're going to be fed this piecemeal by piecemeal. I know there's a comprehensive plan out there. Why haven't we been included in it? Yeah. Right. And, you know, once it's, once it's built, there's no going back. And we're going to have closed gates. I mean, it's going to impact our community. However, we're not going to be able to access their public roads, which are private, but really they're going to become public. There's no giving back to the community. So they're, cut, they're taking, but they're not giving back. Mm -hmm. And RSA and Fairhope can do a whole lot better than this. Yeah, I will say on our last comprehensive plan, we had four community meetings, and each had over 400 people in attendance. As far as a future comprehensive plan, as far as a future comprehensive plan and what's going on, you need to discuss that with the mayor. No, I'm talking about a comprehensive plan for this development. Oh, for this, yeah. okay. A that master plan, plan for this development. Thank you. And I know that we'll see in the next phase that where there is an open public public meeting. However, we haven't been communicated with properly. I think two people came to that meeting, which clearly indicates that communication was not out there. So before we go forward with this, I'd like to see a step back, involve the community, and then make a good plan and move forward. And it will be a win-win for everybody. Right. Thank you very much. Well, anybody else wish to speak to this item? All right. If that um, if that's the case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, Tim, if you could come up, we've got um, a number of questions, uh, namely the ones that we can address with our group is the ingress and egress and the drainage. Um, also, I think the, the last lady made a very good point. Um, is there an actual overall plan that you all have for the entire property um, at this point? I know we're just talking about, you know, bringing it into a zoning, but it still it is a little bit PUD-esque. And do you all have some type of an overall master plan of, of what's beyond phase six? Um, <clears throat> Good evening, Planning Commission. My name is Tim Lawley. I'm with Hutchinson Moore and Rowell. Um, I'm on, I kind of wrote down some of these points as well, Lee. I'm just going to go down my list and <clears throat> let me know if I missed something. <clears throat> First of all, I, I would like to start off by saying that um, as the property currently sits, it's in the county unzoned and it's open to a wide variety of uses, uh, industrial uses, commercial uses, residential uses. And <clears throat> by us asking this property to be annexed in the city of Fairhope, we are restricting it to a single family residential use. 
which is, in my opinion is a, is a big deal. Um, you're eliminating all of those other more intrusive uses that could come on that property and, and limit it to a single family residential use. Um, secondly, um, as you stated earlier, the, the rezoning will not affect what anybody is currently allowed to do or not to do on their property. Their zoning will remain unchanged and the uses allowed on their property would also remain unchanged. So it's the, the purpose of this application <coughs> is strictly to affect our property and not, not anybody else's surrounding property. Um, there were numerous questions about drainage and um, as a civil engineer, that's one of the main things we focus on in the design. As you'll see in the in the next presentation, if, if we get there, um, phase six, we have a three and a half, about a three acre to three and a half acre detention pond, new pond being built to service phase six and some of the future phases. And you also see the uh, adjacent creek that was uh, referenced, which is more of a dry gully, is remaining completely untouched. We've got probably a hundred foot swath through there that there's no development plan whatsoever. And the trees will remain, the creek will remain. There's absolutely nothing except one road crossing going across that creek. So we can get to the, from the east side of our property to the west side of our property. Um, regarding traffic and the number of entrances, there's uh, currently two entrances to this development. Uh, both are off Battles Road. I'm sure most people here are familiar where those are at. Uh, phase six will uh, present a third entrance to this development will be on Section Street and then in the future there will be a, a another entrance on the north side of a Twin Beach roughly where they reference where that uh, road they reference go in I think it's cross street from Wilson so eventually there was planned to be four entrances for this development at the, at the final build out um, wetlands uh, as Nancy stated we are it, you know, we have worked closely with the wetland scientists and professional to look at it and also met with the coral on site and we're following all our due diligence and, and what's required as far as wetlands and wetland planning for, for typical development. Um, regarding the um, overall plan or comprehensive plan, I would say we have an overall sketch at this point. I would be happy to provide it. I think I've shared that with Richard Peterson before just for some uh, sewer planning and that kind of stuff um, it's not anything real formal it's a hand-drawn document but i'll be happy to share that with anybody who would like to see it and it's not necessarily something that's set in stone like I say it's hand-drawn hand scaled and yeah, you can look at phase six versus the phase six sketch and they're very close but there are some minor differences so when we get in it's more of a conceptual plan and then we get in the design we fine-tune it and uh and go ahead with it um and I think that's all I got. Do I have anything else I need to touch on? I would, <coughs> public meeting. Now I'm going to tell you very shortly and very briefly about 42 years of dealing with the uh, city of Fairhope in a, in a zoning issue. Uh -huh. uh, I think we all are familiar with that up on the north end. But what I would suggest to you and what certainly we found out over the course of that many years, it, it is imperative, when, especially if you've got this many people that, can, that come that are interested, that want to know and want to be apprised of what's going on, that perhaps you guys should set up with them, and I bet you, the Reverend, where are you, Reverend, you still in here? Yeah. Um, uh, I bet you, you probably could get access to one of the churches, mm -hmm. but to get these people that are in the community and invite them to an open meeting where you can explain and just show them what it is that you're trying to do. It solves so much of the uncertainty for people that are in close proximity, especially for those that have been there for generations. And uh, we did it. We did it on a number of, we did it on a number of different occasions. And uh, I just think for, for as, as much as uh, RSA has, uh, has developed in that neck of the woods, it would uh, not be a big deal to, right. for y'all to do that. I, I certainly certainly understand your point and uh, I, I guess to be honest with you you know we, we've been working on this development for 10 years and had multiple public meetings and this this is the first time I've had a group show up in opposition and, and so we've been working in this area wait 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 excuse me uh, but but you're in their backyard now right that's 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 the ticket well our meeting today is the 12th due to Mardi Gras West meeting late. Are you suggesting that we hold this over until April, which is less than 30 days, and give them time to meet with the community? Do you have a community meeting that we... 
Yeah, the community meeting is not required for a zoning application. Okay. But, but, the, but, but it's not. We, we did have for the subdivision, and two people showed up. Okay. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not required, right. but just as a good neighbor. Yeah, well, well, we did send it out for the subdivision, like saying we had two, two adjacent property owners show up. But I, but I understand, but all I'm suggesting, I'm, and all I'm doing is suggesting, well, I can't make you do anything. No, I understand but, what you're But if, if you would contact perhaps the pastors of the, of, the, of the several churches that are in that area, I'll bet you on Sunday that were to get to a lot of people. Right. And, and, then, and, then, and then perhaps just do that. I just think it will solve a lot of uh, heartache and, and, and backbreaking for you guys, and I know it'll solve a lot for us. Because every time y'all come here in the next three or four or five phases, you can be looking at all these people again. Right. And if you could bring that, that, you know, if you could have a meeting with them and have the overall sketch that you're asking, not that it's, you know, in stone, where they just kind of have an idea of what's eventually going to be there. Because I think that if you communicate that, hey, this is what we're proposing, you know, if we walk away, I mean, it could be all residential anyway. Anybody that does it residential is going to bring in the city limits. And the other, only other option, if it's not residential, is it something commercial? And if I lived out there, I wouldn't want something commercial unzoned in my backyard necessarily, you know, machine shop or something that's rattling at, you know, early in the morning or late at night. So, I, you know, I think if you, you know, do a little bit more communication, I have a feeling that a lot of the people that are objecting today will probably get on board. All right. Well, like, like I say, I, 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 and I, I completely agree with the community meeting would probably would avoid a lot of this on the front end. Um, but and, and I, I understand I, you follow the letter of the law, and sometimes, you know, the way the addresses go when you put those letters out, you know, people get them, and one person talks to someone else. A lot of times, you get a little niche, and you know, the addresses are outdated or what have you. But um, but I, I will I will say again though that I think we're we're are improving the situation by restricting the use on this property to, to residential, um, and and then I'll be again I'll be happy to share the the overall sketch plan that we have at this point but I'm just I'm afraid that it may lead to more confusion if 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 we share that now and there ends up being some changes and that's not what gets built are we going to have another problem here where they say well they say we we're going to build this and y'all end up building this and that kind of stuff so I don't want to create well, confusion as long as you just as long as you paint it as it's a conceptual plan right. I mean I think everybody understands and, and that the lots are would be set in stone of how many lots there would be of the 226 mm -hmm. and I'd be glad to attend that meeting yeah I'll, I'll be the, I'd, I'd like to come too. I live down there I do feel like um, I would rather have it annexed in because, like they were saying, it, we wouldn't have to worry about something being put there that's out of what we would rather want, which is residential housing. Right. But even if you propose a plan and brought it to them, um, then I feel like it would be a situation where we understand it's residential. It's not, mm. as you put, a resort. In most yeah. people's minds, I think the the zoning is is a little confusing, but and it's it is all uh, the low rise of the resort, which is the resort zoning, which is single family residential. That's what it's restricted to: is I, single I, family I, residential. And I do feel like um, you where the uh, entrance is on Twin Beach Road. Uh, you guys probably should have put it at the top of the hill. There's already a, there was a road there already, so that would probably. Um, help with traffic, you know, um, because when you're down low, I think you guys could relook at that, that situation I, too. We can look at it, and, I, and that's just the, the road that was put in is just a temporary road that was used for the logging trucks, and we coordinated with Baldwin County as that's their right of way, and um, that's the location they wanted us to put in. I don't quite know if our property goes all the way to the top of the hill. Um, I don't think it does. I, basically, where that road is is right dead in the center of where our, that blue line that that touches Twin Beach, okay. and and so the county wanted us to kind of line it up where it was crossed from Wilson, so it, you didn't create staggered intersections and that kind of stuff. Okay, because the one across from Cedar, it, is it Cedar? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Cedar. Yeah. Okay. You're, you went across from Wilson. The Cedar is actually at the top of the hill. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's just fine. May, may I just point something out in the delay process? They do have the preliminary plat that they have which 
would affect construction um, is conditional upon this zoning case. So I just uh, wanted to point I'm, that I'm out. I'm just going to ask if, if Tim would be, if you would mind requesting that both of these be held over to the next meeting. Um, if, if that's what the Planning Commission feels would be the best way to proceed, then I don't have a problem with that. I think so. It's something this size, I think, doing that mm -hmm. and just, I mean, I like it. Frankly, I just think that, you know, we need to communicate to the community more the pros and cons of this proposal. But no, knowing what, what the county will allow on that 99 acres. Yeah, and I think that's As opposed to being annexed into the city mm -hmm. and being limited to residential, there's a no-brainer. I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I just think if we take just take a, you know it's an abundance of caution. Yes, ma'am. I do have a question. Um, Ken, this is going to be for you. If if they table it, will I have to run another legal ad in the newspaper? Because if so, I do not have enough time to do that. My well, deadline has table passed. It, you don't. We've never. We've had a public hearing on this. We've had the okay. public hearing. We That's don't fine. have to have That's a public fine. hearing again. We're 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 Okay, that's fine. I'll have time for the subdivision, just not the the annexation. Okay. Okay. Is that all right? That's okay. fine. Okay. Do I, do I need a motion to hold this over? No, well, the public hearing's closed. We can talk about it after the meeting, ma'am. No, no, it wasn't a question. It was just. A uh, what did you ask? Do we need to make a motion as far as the tabling this? Uh, I, move, I move that we uh, table this application until the April meeting. I have a motion that we table the continue the zoning uh, application to the next meeting. Do I have a second? second? Any further? All in favor say aye. Aye. And now for the subdivision case SD 1912, can you make the same motion? Same motion on uh, SD 19.12. <coughs> Do I have a second? Second. Any further? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, All right, we'll see you next. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. I appreciate thank it. You. And, and if you would, please, I know, I know these people are going to know, but when you do get a, a meeting set up, would you please let us know? I will. I will. Okay. Good. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank, thank you, Tim. All right. Uh, next motion on the agenda is... Um, SD 1913 Polo Place, a three lot subdivision. Uh, Buford? And thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission members. And Chairman, Commissioners, if you will indulge me very, very briefly, because we have some guests who may be not, not quite familiar with this process. My name is Buford King. I am a city planner with the city of Fairhope. It is my duty and my job to present development applications to the Planning Commission on behalf of city staff for consideration by this body. What we have before you, but what we have before the Planning Commission for consideration, this is SD 19.13 Polo Place Subdivision. This is a preliminary plat approval. Because of the nature of this development, this is a preliminary plat approval. It will require a final plat approval once the development activities have been conducted. Uh, commissioners and audience, if you look on the screens, you'll notice the left image uh, the left image, that is a zoning map. We normally include these with our, with our presentations. You will notice there's no color coding in the zoning map because subject property and the surrounding subject properties are unzoned in Baldwin County. You'll also notice the image on the right is an aerial image. The crosshatch area shows the proposed lots to be created by this subdivision. You'll see the general location noticed, uh, noted uh, at the bottom of the slide. This is about three-eighths of a mile south of the intersection of Battles Road and South Section Street. This is represented, the engineer of record is Hutchison Morin Rao uh, on behalf of the Teachers Retirement Systems of Alabama, which is one of the components of our essay. Chairman, Commissioners, there are two plats in your package. If you will indulge me, I'll explain why there are two plats. The development itself is fairly simple and fairly straightforward if you will uh, indulge me the time here. So there are two, slat, two plats, as we said. I'll describe plat one first. And this is the request of the developer is adoption, approval of the first plat, staff recommendations for the second plat. You'll see the basic lot information there in the center of your screen. 
What I'd call to the attention of the commissioners is that in Plat 1, you'll notice this is in unzoned Baldwin County. The subdivision regulations of the City of Fairhope require that unzoned lots be at least 100 feet wide and 15,000 square feet in size. You'll notice that these lots are slightly narrower and are slightly smaller than that requirement. Of course, there will be a waiver that we'll discuss uh, uh, momentarily. There's a tremendous amount of green space that will be associated. I didn't even attempt to calculate a percentage because you'll have a 1.07 lot development with nearly 12 acres of green space due to the golf course. Um, you see the parent parcel PPI in right there. As we mentioned, that's, um, that is uh, unzoned Baldwin County. Um, we'll explain the significance of the publicly maintained road here in just a moment. Mr. Tim Lawley is the engineer of record. He is with us here tonight. So this is plat one. You'll see the new lots there. What I'd call the attention of the citizens as well as the commissioners, on the far left, you'll notice on this particular plat, I've color coded a very light red region. What this plat proposes is basically a gap between the proposed lot one and the existing, lot lo existing lots, I think that's lots 60 through 62. Um, of the adjacent subdivision. Plat 2, as you'll see, again, the basic information of the lots to be proposed. You'll notice in this case, all are at least 100 feet wide, all are at least 15,000 square feet. The note that I'll mention here, Plat 2 is in full compliance with City of Fairhope subdivision regulations. Therefore, the staff recommendation is for approval of Plat 2. Uh, what you'll notice at the bottom of the slide, the applicant wishes for Plat 1 to be approved, as well as approval of a waiver of the article reference right there of the subdivision regulations to allow lots less than 15,000 square feet and narrower than 100 feet wide. We'll describe it in a little bit detail, more detail in a future slide. And this is the actual Plat of, uh, this is Plat 2. You'll notice slightly larger lots. And Buford, um, it should be mentioned that it, that came out of meetings with the neighbors who lived there when the developer lived with them. It wasn't something the developer came up with himself. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that and in, in we'll, we'll illuminate that here in just a moment. So let's talk about some criteria for, and um, I have received several phone calls inquiring about the development. Um, and Emily, did we receive any written correspondence? No, I did not. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyette. I did receive probably five or six phone calls, Chairman, Commissioners. So what I prepared this slide right here is try to answer some of the basic questions that I answered several times via telephone. Uh, first of all, the Retirement Systems of Alabama, RSA as we re refer to colloquially, is the owner of the property, specifically the teacher's retirement system, and they are the developer of the site. So Fairhope subdivision regulations require all lots to front upon a paved, publicly maintained street or road. Polo Ridge Boulevard satisfies that criteria. Physical size, as we mentioned earlier, 15,000 square foot lots that are 100 feet wide. Uh, drainage, in this case, the drainage in green space is accomplished via ex the existing golf course. And Mr. Lolly gave, uh, furnished, uh, in lieu of the drainage calculation package we would normally see on a major subdivision, he gave us written correspondence that basically said the very robust drainage system of the, golf, of the golf course will handle the drainage by the site that um, structures on those lots, the increased runoff would be minuscule at best. Essentially, I would think, not engineering speak, that probably sheet flow of the golf course would accomplish all the drainage on the site, and Mr. Lolly can elaborate upon that. Um, now, see, subject property is neither zoned by the city of Fairhope, Fairhope nor Baldwin County. Even if this was a zoned property, an incompatible use is not necessarily created because the proposed lots are for single family residences. Uh, the building setback lines shown on the plats, in the case this being unzoned, then the subdivision regulations of Baldwin County are applicable, which it reflects. Another question I answered was the was questioned about who's the builder, who are the home builders, who will build homes on the sites. And my response there is the City of Fairhope's regulatory authority does not allow or disallow certain contractors or builders um, assuming a complete, correct, and compliant building permit and plans are submitted for review, then building permits would be issued. So, Chairman Commissioners, I have two staff recommendations to make it, uh, to make it more straightforward. This staff recommendation right here, you'll notice on line four at the bottom, 
this condition of approval for references plat two. It is fully compliant with the subdivision regulations. The other three items above are standard housekeeping issues we normally see on subdivisions from time to time. This is plat two. Plat one, essentially the first three items are the same. If I'd call your attention to article four, this one would, re this one would request approval of plat one. It would also request approval of the waiver of the subdivision regulations to allow the slightly more narrow and slightly smaller lots contemplated by plat two. You'll notice we mentioned earlier the additional separation area between proposed lot one and the existing lot 60, 60, 61, and 62 of Point Clear Stables. That would be incorporated if plat one is approved. Um, the requested waiver was furnished and properly advertised. Uh, you'll notice my comment up there, staff does not necessarily object to approval of plat one, uh, which reflects the lot sizes. That is a, a, a reasonable request. Um, certainly a reasonable request. I don't have any, uh, any objection if this commission approved plat one. Um, but since we have a fully compliant plat, that is why uh, plat two is recommended for approval. Uh, Chairman Commissioners, before we turn it over to Mr. Lawley, I'm happy to answer any questions. I've got a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Buford, I'm, I might have missed this. Were these, were these lots, were they already lots, or was this just a, a, an undeveloped uh, piece of property that was left, left over and it is now they, they want to divide them into three lots? Uh, Chairman Commissioner, that's correct. Mr. Dias is correct. If you look, probably the aerial map I've put back on the screen um, is a little bit easier to identify. That is basically an undeveloped corner. Um, if you see your image on your screen and um, the, the, uh, the uh, RSA uh, identified this area as a possible additional, an, uh, an area for additional lots. Okay, so it was a, it was a however many acres it was one acre, whatever. It was just a one acre piece and now the subdivision is why we're seeing this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Other, otherwise, okay, you've answered the question and, the, and my thought yes, was why, are, why is the city imposing its uh, uh, regulations on these three lots if it's in the county, but you just answered the question because now it's a subdivision. Yes, sir. This is this is a a a, a traditional three lot subdivision. It, it is not a minor subdivision, Chairman That's and Commissioners, right. because we do have there is some sewage infrastructure that will have to be installed to run to extend a main to service those three lots. So that will trigger a final plat review process. But it's a very, it's a relatively short main extension to an existing manhole just west of the existing property. Okay. Uh, so you will see it again for final plat purposes. So it's technically a major subdivision, albeit a fairly simple one. Okay. Got it. Any further questions yeah. for the staff? Yes, ma'am. I, I had a question about the tree protection. Um, you know, we didn't see any, in my mind, the way that that should work is they should identify all trees that would need to be protected, all trees over 20 inch diameter breast height first and then indicate which are allowed to be or a, they're able to protect instead of just indicating which ones they're going to protect you know you'd want them to start off by identifying what's there and then see if they can work around it and if they can't then we deal with that then and chairman commissioners so and, and i apologize for because of the length of time of these meetings and and the numerous slides I already give you and not give you full plans. So we do have a plan, we do have a drawing that include, was included in our package that we reviewed. Okay. All the trees are called out, but again, you have those routine edits that we find when we put these together. So via condition of approval, what, I, what I'm asking for is the tree protection details that are required by the landscape ordinance and just reflect those on their four construction plans. Okay, so they already did identify Yes, ma'am, so we have, we have identification of trees, and, uh, but I, we're at, we ask for those tree protection details on their four construction plans. I, I guess my, my next question, since we didn't see that, is just if, if the two, um, if between plot one and plot two, if there's any difference in any significant trees ending up in setbacks or easements and therefore being more easily able to be protected. And, and uh, Chairman Commissioners, I'll, I'll defer that question to, to Mr. Lawley. What I will say is that I know that 
from seeing it physically, from seeing it physically in the field, there's there's great there's a great deal of vegetation uh, north of Polar Ridge Boulevard. The east sides of lot 60 through 61 are heavily vegetated. So the 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 light red area you see on the plat right there, that remains a portion of the remnant parcel. So that piece of property Would remains with the rest of the golf course. So you know, so whatever vegetation remains on that strip is under the purview of the golf course. Last question may be kind of rhetorical, but it appears that um, even the smaller lots are bigger or possibly bigger than the, the lots immediately adjacent and the rest of the subdivision. Is that accurate? And Chairman Commissioners, I, I apologize. I don't quickly, I don't readily have lot sizes on the adjacent lots, but just looking at this plat one, for example, um, I'd say that these are probably a bit larger. Um, and I apologize, I don't know the full development history on the adjacent subdivision. That may have been a village subdivision, so it may have slightly smaller lot sizes. I don't know if Ms. Boyette can remember the that's, a, that's an older development, so I apologize. I don't know the history on that development. But I certainly, what I can assure this commission is that this development has been evaluated according, according to the current regulations, the current subdivision regulations of the city. Let me ask you this, Buford. So we're using the golf course as green space for this since it's not a minor subdivision. So does that mean that the golf course is brought into this and therefore they couldn't redevelop that hole at some point in the future? I mean, in other words, if they decide five years from now, you know, golf's kind of expensive. You know, we got a lot of chinch bugs out there and, you know, golf's sort of fallen out of popularity. We only need 18 holes, not 36. And boy, these, this area is popping like a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like 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 popcorn of the movie theater. Let's go ahead and get us you know dozens more lots out of you know holes, you know one through eighteen, and just have eighteen holes from now on. I mean, is there anything to stop this golf course from being subdivided? I mean, then all of a sudden, what we're considering green space and drainage for these three houses is gone. That's a great question, Mr. Chairman, and. Um I don't want to speculate about the, the, the future desires of the current property owner and the development. Um, uh, what I will reiterate is, of course, um, should I mean, that I'm occur. I was wondering in this drawing if we should have an acre or a half acre or something off that golf course included in this. Otherwise, I mean, or should we just say we're giving them a waiver of the green space since it's... Uh, you know, I mean, this isn't an owner's association for these three lots or anything. So, in essence, these three people don't own the golf course. So, I, I think under the waivers, maybe we should also say that we're given a waiver of green space and a waiver of water runoff because of the size, because we're not requiring anything. That's a great question. Uh, that's a great question, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, what I would say to that, though, is that that's not a waiver. That would not be a waiver that would have been advertised. Um, so if that is the desire of this commission, we can certainly consider it, but it would require either tabling or continuing the action to research that uh, and bring it back, and then if necessary, to have the time to advertise away. Is, is there some... There's uh, golf courses that are going under because it's uh, a lot of the younger kids are not playing golf now. It takes too much time away from their families. And they're closing mm -hmm. them down and they're doing exactly what you're talking about, Lee. A lot of developments are being redeveloped. To, exactly. I mean, to, to start to use the golf courses. I think that's an excellent point and we shouldn't um, assume that the drainage will work in the future with the green space. 
Yes, sir. So, Chairman, Commissioner, certainly staff is a uh, staff is uh, certainly respectful. Of, certainly respectful of this commission's uh, desires. That's an excellent question. Uh, I think Mr. Tim Lawley would probably like to address that before we have the pu public hearing. Um, but certainly, you know, we certainly certainly respect the commission's decision if that's the route we take. All right. Thank you, Tim. Do you want to add anything at this point? <laughs> You sure are getting a lot of stuff tabled. What's that about? Well, we're going to try not to get this one tabled. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, let me uh, address uh, Rebecca's question about the trees. Um, we have voided all the trees with our infrastructure. There's no significant trees planned on taking down. And the, the minor shifting of the lot line does not put any trees that were in the middle of the lot on easement. Sir. So it, there's really no difference between plats one or two. Okay, except that perhaps in plat in the one with the, the green space buffer there might actually be a little bit more protected vegetation yes and there's not um, there's one significant tree at the southwest corner of lot one and although it's hev heavily wooded a lot of those trees in there are not over the 20 inch threshold to locate them gotcha. Thank so you I for can only clarifying. speak for the for the large trees okay um, and re regarding the green space question I honestly contemplated this myself the, the way we've, we've got it done and I, I would propose that we would have no problem dedicating the, the the 20 foot strip there and then whatever the remainder required on the north end of lot one and and just modify the plat to include a a dedicated 10 10 percent green space that is part of the platted area that way there's no confusion in the future if something were done with a remnant piece of the parcel of which green space goes where and that kind of stuff. Okay. If that would be satisfactory on y'all's yeah, end. That sounds good. And ba work. basically we need about, what is it, 10% required? So we need, um, what's the, what's the acreage on the, on the new plat? We need 40, 4,600 square feet and we've got about 4,000 right there on, on the side. So, I mean, it'd just be a little, little chunk on the north side too. That would be recorded green space. Okay. Um, what about the, the drainage though? The the drainage improvements we're proposing are in that in that long in that red area. There's already a little bit of an existing swell behind those houses. We're gonna improve that swell a little bit, make it a little bit deeper and a little bit wider, and basically take any of our water that's come from our site and direct it north to the golf course and get it into the golf course drainage system where it's not affecting any of the adjacent property owners. I mean to you, to Lee's point about what if the golf course becomes is no uh, if, if at that point it would just be treated like off-site drainage mm -hmm. for any other development and it would have to be dealt with at that point in time yeah. any other questions for the developer mm -hmm. all right i'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time um case sd 1913 polo place three lot major subdivision uh, if anybody wishes to speak to this item at this time, uh, please come up and state your name and your address. Paul, are you not going to say anything? <laughs> not to put you on the spot or anything, but... Paul and I did discuss this this month, I will put out as the yeah. disclosure thank you Lee we did discuss it a bunch and I'm actually new to the subdivision we're building in it now on lot um, 61 um, and we certainly were um, surprised to see the um, the submission of, of what they planned on doing here however you know I, we took that risk when we agreed to, to build in here so um, we just we frankly just you know wanted to come forward and ask that we give some relief um, and you know the, the biggest issue too not only quality of life but just the the compaction of these lots back up against us and you know really it's just as bad for these newly proposed lots as it would be us because it makes it so tight in there and I you know in talking with a uh, local um, surveyor who did a lot of my survey work on my lot uh, he did comment on the fact that if the amount of water that we have coming on us now off of this property this green space um, however you know only being 20 feet um, it would contain the water 
if they built it properly and it would flow to the north and get back on the golf course and he felt like it would alleviate our current problem you know it may not help it but it won't hurt it uh, any worse than it is so you know in, in in my honest opinion the green space is a much needed thing because you know we see that the development can happen because they meet all the requirements and there's no reason to sit up here and argue it so that's really all I have to say about it yeah. now thank you oh Paul Davis 17674 kitchen post circle anybody else wish to speak to this item Hey, buddy. Yeah, if you just state your name and okay. Uh, my name is Buddy Covington. I'm um, six four one nine Saddlewood Lane, uh, Pulley Ridge subdivision, and I'm representing the Pulley Ridge Property Owners Association. Um, it really, just we have concerns about having three driveways stuck on Pulley Ridge Boulevard, um, especially in this location. It's just west of where you know, one of our bifurcated sections is. Um, like it or not, people go about 40 miles an hour up and down Polo Ridge Boulevard, and um, we're just concerned and um, understand that the regulations require the frontage on, you know, maintained public road, but I guess uh, just asking the, the developers if there's any way in the future to try and reduce the number of driveway cuts, I think that would improve the safety on, on the roadway if they're or plants or that could do that for the ultimate build. Sure. Um, and I guess uh, in listening to y'all talk, it, you, you figured out that, you know, this was the rough and RSA is carving out some lots in what used to be the rough. Um, so I guess my question is, how is this really any different than the two that you've just tabled? Um, we're talking about drainage that may be part of a golf course plan but in the future it may be something different um, shouldn't this be part of the master plan I mean it's the same developer it's the same engineer so I guess by that logic shouldn't it be coordinated with with the plan no I don't know this one's not part of the phase six etc it's part of you know one through if you, if you look at what RSA is doing, I mean, is this phase 11 you don't have or? to go, you, you can only, you only got to go drive around, get your golf cart and go ride around Dogwood. Yeah. The Dogwood course mm -hmm. and all of what used to be the rough, they're figuring out ways right now to get additional lots in there. So right. now, we are, now we all have to, I guess whoever plays golf over they're going to have to get their golf balls out of their we're, swimming pools. But it's, we're, but, we're a lot, but a golf lot of the now. rough now is being converted to uh, home sites. Yeah. Well, we're a lot better golfers now. We don't need as much rough, do we? That's right. That's right. <laughs> all, all the balls will land in Paul's back porch. But um, the new rules now for 2019, you, you get two free throws and a kick. So <laughs> it keeps you from going in the rough. But, uh, you know, it kind of goes back to your question, though. What, what if the golf course becomes something else? You know, uh, that would be part of the plan, uh, you know, that, that we're, I guess, going to communicate with the, with the community on. Right, and that would be an assurance for us, and, and for for the stables as well, the other adjacent neighborhood that you know that drainage is going to be available, or how it's going to be handled, or or that green space idea. I understand you just added some green space, I think, but you know it's um, it just seems like it's all part of the same plan to me. Yeah, I'll ask Tim about that, but it sounds like they've got the green space worked out where mm -hmm. the golf course isn't. You know, it's not contingent upon the golf course being there. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, buddy. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? In that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and turn this portion of the meeting over to the commissioners. And Mr. Chairman, commissioners, if I can interject very, very briefly, just to a note of clarification. Uh, this is a separate development. It is certainly owned by the teacher's retirement system, a component of RSA. This is a completely different development, a completely standalone application. This is not related to the prior two cases that were heard by the Planning Commission. 
different location, different set of circumstances, and annexation is not contemplated by this application. This will remain in unzoned Baldwin County. However, uh, to address the gentleman who spoke earlier, uh, any type of development application that triggers any type of review of the subdivision regulations will still come through the city staff, come before this, come before this commission for consideration. And let's, uh, you know, hate to speculate, but if another three lots, another three lot case came before this staff and this commission, if staff felt that uh, drainage calculations, drainage design was necessary, we have the assistance of our public works director who is a PE, and Mr. Peterson is also a PE. If they look at a development and say, staff, you need to ask for drainage calculations or drainage design, then we as staff requested of the engineer of record. So the subdivision regulations in place do have that provision for that. So thank you, Chairman Commissioners. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Based on what I think I just heard uh, from Tim is they really need uh, the in plat one the little red colored area they need that swale to improve uh, 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 drainage is that what I think I heard I'm sorry I did let's not hear that from, let's from, from Mr. From Mr. Lawley if he can join us Richard and let me clear it up Let, let's say that, that option one was chosen and there's no there's no carved out 20 foot then that lot would have a 20 foot drainage easement to serve the same purpose so the, the drainage has to be accounted for on that, that downhill side, but that could be done in the easement or in a common area. So it, it wouldn't change the drainage. It would just be that drainage feature would be on a lot in a drainage easement versus being in a okay. common area. All right, I'm with that, that, that. That was the original plan. There, there is a 15-foot easement down that property line in both scenarios because it's okay, required. Okay, I'm with you. I got it. All right, so it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, we, we for the can most do it in either scenario. Okay. Correct. I'm with you. All right. With the with the well, it doesn't matter from that standpoint, but from the other standpoint, if it's left out, then it's not going to be cleared. Where if it's in an easement, you know, it can be cleared. You have an air conditioned, you know, compressor there, and you know, mow it, et cetera. So it it might be it, cleared it would if kind it's of left out if they have to enhance the swale. Right. It take the it take the the privacy aspect out from the rear of the. Paul? Please just oh, oh. Too, though, the plat two states 15 foot side setback. So the side of that house would be 15 feet away from the property line, the fire rear property line. So it takes it from 15 feet to 35 feet. Mm -hmm. So it does, it's a significant difference from plat one to plat two. Yeah, and, and one thing I like about the plat two is I like that this is the first time we've had the developers. Yeah, the, the plat with the uh, pink shading. Plot, plot Plat one thing that I like about plat one versus plat two is this is the first time that we've had a meeting with the developers and the community prior to a development where and they've worked together and come up with something that the folks who are most affected by the development prefer. And I think that's kind of a nice you know, nice thing. I think it makes the development better from the standpoint that you don't have that lot number one having, you know, three people staring in their side window from you know, 15 feet away, and then these other lots, um, you know, have a little more buffering from air conditioners, et cetera. So, to me, it's it's a win-win as long as in our motion of approval, you know, we state while we're approving, you know, something that doesn't meet the lot width requirements. Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Davis's current comments were not heard for those watching or for the recording, he was referring to the difference between Plat 1 and Plat 2. So in the case of Plat 2, you'll notice that the western lot line of Lot 1 is immediately adjacent to Lot 61, 60, 61, and 62 of uh, Point Clear Stables. So therefore, you, have a, you would have a 15-foot side setback Whereas in plot one, in addition to that side setback, you'd gain the extra space shown in the area marked in red on plat one. Any further questions or thoughts? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Who maintains the drainage ditch? <laughs> oh, I say well. RSA yeah, maintained. It'll, it'll be maintained by it's, okay. it'll be in, in common areas, so it'll be maintained by by the RSA or if yeah, property if they develop. It. So we want it on a we want the drainage way separated from the three lots then. 
Yes. That, in in plat one, it will be on, on that red strip that Buford is referring to, which will be modified to a recorded area of this plat and, and shown as green space. The area that's being relied upon to provide the buffer and some drainage protection to the, to the west, I guess, from that largest lot is going to be in this subdivision. That, that's it's correct. On plat one, it's not part of the subdivision. Well, it, it is part. It, it's, a, it's a remnant piece of, of the. We're carving all of this out of a 13 acre parcel. And I, I appreciate that point, but what is platted here, the outside boundaries of this three lot subdivision, is indicated to be the subdivision. If there's a fourth remnant parcel that's being relied upon to accommodate this development. It should be reflected on the plan as part of the subdivision, and it's not. Is there a <coughs> is that something you can accomplish too? What would you need to call it, Ken? Would you need to call it a lot four, or would you call it a common area? It would be a common area. Common area or yeah, green space. That, that's what I was referring to. Is we're going to add that to the plat, and it will be a common area. So we can do that in the subject two in our motion. Yeah. Uh, what are the boundaries of the 13 acre parcel? It's um, it, it's the uh, whole parcel there that the golf course sits on. You can see that big parcel that goes all the way back up to uh, Section Street, and you cannot see the West End on that side. Okay. I just didn't see an end to it on the West. Okay. Any further questions? I just, I. I you know, having um, driven down that road a lot, I agree that there's some concerns about traffic. I mean, once you pass through some of the gates, you go into some slower areas where there's some traffic calming. But at this entrance, it's, um, you know, full speed ahead. And so I didn't know if there were any plans for any traffic calming or any, how is that plan to be accommodated for those driveways? Um, it's, I mean, the way I look at it, it's, it's a local road, just like any other local road that you, you can put a driveway off. It's a county maintained right of way. Any kind of traffic calming would have to be approved by them. And um, I'm not sure that the county usually likes to put in that kind of stuff, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What are you ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion. Yes, sir. You got a motion over there, Richard? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion case uh, 19.13 Polo Place subdivision be approved as recommended with the 20 foot buffer or <coughs> drainage way or common area or okay. ground space. All of the above. So, and, ref and reflected on the plat. So the plat one. <coughs> I have a motion for the plat one. And which, the waiver. Which has the pink and the waiver uh, for the staff rec for plat one. And um, do I have a second? Second. Just so everybody's clear, that is the one with the pink buffer. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Uh, well, item passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. If I'm correct, the next item on the agenda is Magnolia and Church, a subdivision approval. If I'm correct, where I think we yes, are. Yes, sir, Chairman, Commissioners, you are correct. So SD 19.14, Magnolia and Church. This is a minor, a minor subdivision, Commissioners. Uh, this is located at the northeast intersection of Church Street and Magnolia Avenue. That's approximately 500 feet west of Section Street. Uh, SE Civil is the uh, engineering firm on behalf of Magnolia Church LLC, who is the developer. We'll go through the basic the basic prop the basic information about the piece of property. You'll see the uh, you'll see the lot size, and this is four lots. You see the we copied the site map right there. Uh, what I'd call to the commission's attention: this is zoned B2 General Business District within the Central Business District. Um, as we've stated ad nauseum many times, all lots front upon the paved publicly maintained road, which in the case, this case is Church Street. And Mr. Larry Smith is the engineer of record. What we have here, commissioners, I've zoomed in on the actual plat and labeled the, uh, uh, the uh, you can see the outline of the existing site. 
the, the, the three brand new lots labeled in light red, lot one as the remnant parcel. And again, you see the site map right there. Uh, because of the B2 zoning, there are no restrictions due to lot size and lots width. Uh, we'll go through the basic criteria and because it's a minor subdivision, this is requesting preliminary and final plat simultaneously. As we said, the uh, property owners, Magnolia Church LLC, and Mr. Vance McCown is the point of contact. Uh, subdivision regulations, as we've talked about, uh, satisfies the requirements of the road frontage. Uh, as we also mentioned, the uh, lot width and lot size is not restricted um, by, the, uh, by the subdivision regulations. Um, so therefore, side and rear setbacks do not apply to this piece of property. The, there, are, there are 20 foot front setbacks as applicable, um, depending upon use, and those are noted on the plat. In this case, in, because this is in the CBD, the drainage is accomplished via existing conveyance system, which is the custom for uh, developments within the CBD. This, this application before you right now does not request any development activities above and beyond creation of the lots. And any, just to reiterate, any future development activities as applicable may require an MOP, a multiple occupancy project, or a site plan review, which this commission would hear. And as a result, uh, the staff recommendation is approval of the three lot, the four lot minor subdivision. Um, and you see the one condition of approval is a request that staff is requesting now whenever subdivisions are created and it is a uh, routine request. Um, Commissioners, I'm happy to answer questions, um, answer questions of staff. Thank you, Buford. Any and questions for Buford before he sits down? And Mr. Mr. Smith is here if you have any questions for the engineer. Thank you very much. And you know, going back to the discussion we had earlier, my great-grandparents had a milk cow, pigs, and chickens on this piece of property. Uh, from 1970 until uh, about the 40s. But Chairman, I was born in 1975. I don't quite remember 1917. that. 1917. <laughs> oh, okay. From 1917 until about 1945. And then, uh, you know, my great grandmother lived on that till about the late 70s. But she didn't have chickens toward the end, by the way. But I can remember her in the early 70s popping chickens' necks at that piece of property. So, you know, it does show you how Fairhope has grown. Um, is there anybody here for SC Civil that would like to uh, make any comments or add anything? If you don't have anything to add, I can open the uh, public hearing and then bring you up if you have any, if we need you for any answers. So, all right. In that case, I'll go ahead and open the. Wait a minute. Late? Uh, I'm about to open the public hearing. In that case, I'll go ahead and I'll open the public yeah. hearing at this time yeah. and just come on up and. Even though we all know you, you still have to say your name and <laughs> your address, Mr. <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> Um, Lee, but you know, most people won't understand what I'm fishing. Tell you, Mr. Ike gonna turn over in his grave. <laughs> I know that. You said 1975. I've been here since '69. So, uh, this subdivision is presented. I would like to say, please do not do this. Lots, the lot size. Lot sizes are 37, 34, and 38. I don't know of anywhere in Fairhope, Alabama, where you can find a 50 foot lot, not even on the colony property. Are we going to open up Pandora's box by allowing 37, 34, and setbacks? We don't know what's going to go there. We have one 50 foot lot, and it's going to come around on the other side, and that property is going to back up to those condos that's already been built. We've got other problems there, which this gentleman back here will know about. We're fixing to have a major deal done on that street for drainage. It's already a problem. It's going to all be connected to this coming down Church Street. I own that property there on the corner, all the way across, and my neighbor's here <laughs> and we are opposed to this minor subdivision as presented the way it is today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? All right, in that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, before there's not a required 
lot width or uh, setback in the central business district, is there? Uh, sir, no, sir. The uh, uh, because we have uh, B two zoning, so the underlying the underlying zoning, you know, is 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 reviewed first in the central business district. The the uh, the there are 20 foot 20 foot front setbacks that are 20 foot front setbacks required in B2 zoning however in the central business district depending upon the use uh, depending upon the use it may be the central business district requires that the actual building is built at the at the right-of-way line right. um, but other than that the lot size and lot width is not there's not a minimum lot size or lot width requirement by B2 zoning. And just to reiterate, commissioners, uh, the request before you is for creation of lots via minor subdivision. There's no other development activity requested by this request. Any type of development activity associated with a multiple occupancy or a site plan review, depending upon what reviews it triggers would come back before this board and or the city council as appropriate no development activities other than creating lots are to be considered tonight so there's really nothing here negatively that violates any ordinance no sir it's a no sir it's a it's a routine minor subdivision okay. uh, commissioners any questions concerns if not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, motion, Mr. Chairman, says uh, case number SD19.14, Magnolia Church Square, subdivision approval. I recommend uh, approval subject to staff recommendations. I've got a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Yes. Uh, any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any against, say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on the agenda are the 1152-11s all for AT&T. If there are no objections by our attorney or any planning commission members, I am going to get our staff member to go ahead and present all five at one time rather than have a redundance, and then I'll ask for, for five individual motions to approve unless somebody has a reason that they want to vote to disapprove something. All right. Not trying to twist your arm to approve, but just saying. The project will begin, will be getting close to the intersection of Atlanta Avenue and Section Street and end on Section Street across from Sarge Turner Road. On the slide here on the left, you have an aerial on the right uh, showing the zoning. The dashed line is the proposed right of way work. You can see it starting there at the beginning of Atlanta and it actually ends at Sarge Turner Road, which is right there at Atlanta Park at the football stadium going there. And if there's any questions on that I'll move on to 1904 uh, similar request 1152 11 review and approval of the proposed underground installation of approximately 4101 linear feet of fiber optic cable within Fairhope's right of ways uh, the installation be a directional bore of two inch HDPE conduit beginning at an existing manhole on South Ingleside going south to Middle Street east across US 98 down Spring Run to Booth Road. Uh, from there, it will continue south, but that will enter into Baldwin County's right of way and go through there. Uh, this project will require the installation of three 30-inch uh, by 48-inch handholes, uh, as indicated on the drawings that AT&T uh, provided staff. Here's a similar picture with the aerial on the left and the zoning on the right. That was a, a lot of words to say that it's starting up there on Ingleside 
and any down on Booth Road. I'd like to point out that a lot of this, some of this is overbuild that they're going, that they're installing now for future uses that they may need. So they're trying to, why they're going to have doing some work trying to get it all done at one time to be less invasive to some of the surrounding areas. Uh, the next review, 1905, is a request of AT&T for 115211 utility review. Uh, proposed underground installation of approximately 2,746 linear feet of fiber optic cable within Fairhope's right of ways. Uh, this installation will be a directional bore of inch and a half HDPE conduit beginning at an existing manhole near 755 Fairhope Avenue, going towards North Ingleside and continue north to the intersection of Gafer Avenue. Uh, this project will require the installation of five 30 inch by 48 inch handholes, as again indicated on the drawings. And with the legend here, you can see it starts out at uh, down there at Fairhope Avenue, right where Fairhope Avenue makes the jog, and then turns north and runs down Ingleside uh, to Gafer Avenue. 1906, I'm gonna show you the map as well. This one is not a straight line shot. Uh, Mr. Wade Mitchell is here if you have any questions explaining as far as where the exact locations are going uh, to be at and what the sites are. But it's uh, another 1152.11 review for the approval of the proposed underground installation of approximately 5,769 linear feet of fiber optic cable and approximately 9,117 linear feet of aerial fiber optic cable uh, within the city's uh, right of ways. Uh, the installation will be a directional bore of inch and a half HDPE conduit with new fiber optic cable along Gafer Avenue near the intersection of North Ingleside Street, Marco Court, Jasmine Avenue, Myrtle Street, Yupon Avenue, Lillian Circle, Audubon Place, and part of Cedar Avenue, and one span on Greenwood Avenue. Uh, the installation of the overlashing new fiber optic cable to existing AT&T cable along Gafer Avenue, Blue Island Street, and on part of Evergreen Street and the new installation of a new strand with new fiber optic cable on existing utility poles along North Ingleside Street, Holly Drive, Olive Avenue, Cedar Avenue, Greenwood Avenue, part of Myrtle Street, and part of Evergreen Street. And again, there are all the proposed locations highlighted up there in yellow on the aerial side, and on the right is just a brief picture of the zoning, all zoned R1, and the streets that it will be uh, touching there. Finally, Utility Review 1907 considers the request of AT&T uh, for an 1152 Utility Review and approval of the proposed underground installation of approximately 9,300 linear feet of fiber optic cable within the Fairhopes right of ways. Uh, this installation will be a directional bore of two inch HDPE conduit beginning at an existing manhole located at Fells Avenue and South Church Street and proceed west along Fells Avenue to Liberty Street, then south to Orange Avenue, then west to South Mobile Street, then south to the end of Fairhope's right of way near Nelson Drive, and then it'll enter into Baldwin County's right of way. Uh, the project will require the installation of one 30 inch by 48 inch handhold as indicated on the drawings that were provided. Uh, staff's recommendation, or here's the, uh, sorry, the aerial and the zoning map, again showing where the construction of this will take place. Uh, staff's recommendation is for approval of utility reviews 19.03 through 19.07, all with the condition of approval that the applicant shall follow the general comments related to the utility work that was stated in the entire uh, review package that was sent to you and sent to them as well, our standard general comments that are from all the directors of all the departments, and the applicant and applicant's contractor shall follow the right-of-way installation and permitting and work procedures document that is provided by the city's building official, Eric Cortinas. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them best I can. And Mr. Wade Mitchell from AT&T is here as well to answer any questions that you might possibly have. Any questions? Nope. Anything to add? <laughs> no, I, I appreciate Mike's done a lot of hard work over the last month to help us get through all this, but uh, we've been busy. <laughs> we got more to come, too. So. It's about five miles. <laughs> Just that's, about. that's a lot, yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, right. Tell me again what we need. Any, anybody in the audience wish to say anything? Uh, it's not a public hearing, but just in case. Um, Ken, is it okay if uh, if a motion is made saying I make a motion we approve 1903, 1904, 1905, or do we need individual motions for each? I realize there's 
practical matter, it may seem unnecessary, but I think for the record, we ought to have an individual motion. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so you've got to have, Ken, a motion, a second, and then we've got to vote on it, each individual one. Please. Okay. Stay with me. Got it. <laughs> We're ready, sir. Okay. Wait, wait, first of all, is there going to be any further discussion? Okay, if not, then we're going to skip the further discussion. All right, that. here we go. Okay, uh, I recommend approval of UR 19.03. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 I approve, uh, recommend approval of case UR 19.04. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I move that we approve case number UR 19.05. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I uh, move we approve case number UR 19.06. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I uh, move we approve case number UR 19.07. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The last Aye. item on the uh, agenda, um, individual uh, informal review, 1901. Request of Chase and Earl on behalf of Glenda Gravely for an informal review of proposed three lot subdivision on the Bay Echo Lane. Informal review at the request of Chase and Earl Real Estate on behalf of Glenda Gravely for an informal review for a proposed three lot division of Lot 4 Bay Echo Subdivision. The property is located at the south end of North Mobile Street and Davis Drive. The applicant is here to um, go over what they are requesting. Thank you very much. My name is Larry Chasen. I live in Daphne at 790 Daphne Avenue. Uh, this property, I want to just briefly tell you how we got here. Uh, I've had this property for sale for uh, uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, it's seven, a little over seven acres on Mobile Bay at the south end of North Mobile Street. Uh, during the year or two that this property was for sale, had multiple phone calls, but not any of them were ever uh, someone wanting to build a house on seven and a half acres. Every single phone call dealt with can I buy an acre? Can I buy this? Can I buy that? So it became apparent to me that uh, the, the, the idea of a subdivision would probably uh, come to fruition at some point. So I suggested to my client, Ms. Gravely, that we approach the city just with a, a, the conceptual idea that we would divide this property into four, lot, or four lots because there are two existing lots. We wanted to take lot four Bay Echo and make three lots out of it. And I sat down with the staff at Fairhope to discuss this because it has been uh, a similar subdivision just to the north of this was done on the backside of Lot 1 Bay Echo subdivision several years ago. So it seemed like a logical request. I uh, met with the staff. They suggested I just make an informal presentation just to have an opportunity to have feedback here from the Planning Commission. In between making that submission and tonight, we did receive an offer uh, to buy the property um, subject to a being able to take lot four and divide it into three lots the way that we were proposing to do it. They wanted to buy the entire piece of property if they could make essentially four lots, one existing lot and the second lot be divided three times. We've been through enough discussions to realize that we have uh, one uh, item of the subdivision regulations that I've heard here several times tonight, and that is that every lot has to be on a paved public road. Uh, North Mobile Street, the, the, the south end of North Mobile Street is actually a rock shell cul-de-sac. It's been that way for a number of years. In, in my uh, discussions with the people that live in the area, they like it like that. Um, they would do not want it paved, and neither do the people that are purchasing it. Um, so we were told that in order to do that, we would need to request a waiver of that requirement to pave it. So that is uh, uh, something that we're in the process of doing. 
I should mention that when that when the when the offer to buy the property came about, they got very busy, hired an engineer, Larry Smith, and his representative is here tonight, and he's on the agenda for your April first meeting to actually present you with some plats and all of the formal presentation for a three lot subdivision. So I won't waste a lot of your time here except to just tell you that what we're going to be discussing in April is going to be the request for the waiver uh, of the uh, paving of the cul-de-sac on North Mobile. Mr. Johnson and I have discussed that there are some ongoing drainage concerns there. Those concerns, I think it's fairly well agreed. There's none of that water generated on the Gravely property. That drainage that has been a problem is coming off of North Mobile Street. So we are going to deal with that uh, along working in conjunction with the city. The fourth lot, which would be the easternmost part, if you've got, we don't I guess we have a map here tonight, but the fourth lot is, um, has an access that comes in from uh, Gafer on a little strip called uh, Davis Street. You got that plat? Okay, thank you. Um, just, to, just to look at it, and this is, this, 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 the sketch you'll get on April 1st is a whole lot better than this. I did this in, at my desk. But so what is labeled lot three, you will see is, is there's Davis Drive there. Uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. King and other members of the staff did a lot of research to try to determine how did Davis Avenue come into being. Uh, I think by April the 1st, we're gonna have a, a, a concise answer for you, but essentially years ago when uh, these large lots on Mobile Bay were created and Gafer was a street, they essentially uh, obtained uh, easements, two 15-foot easements that go from the east end of the Gravely property back to Gafer Court. It appears that as we stand today, the gentleman that's on lot three right above my lot three, that's Mr. Ramsey, who I talked to, to today on the telephone, gave me a lot of history. He basically uses the north half of Davis Avenue, which is 15 feet. It's basically his driveway to his house. We are proposing the same waiver that we're looking for up on North Mobile Street in that Davis Avenue is not paved and it is not a public street. So essentially, we want to create, we want to take the 15 foot, the south part of Davis Drive and essentially make it a, a driveway to our lot three on the back side of our property. So in summary, we'll be back on April the 1st. We'll be asking for waivers on the paved uh, public rights of way. So if there are any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer. Well, it brings, it, to me, it brings the, the question that I think you've got to ask yourself, you being on the planning commission, you're still on the planning commission at uh, Daphne? No, sir. Had all that fun you could stand? I, I've been, <laughs> this brought back memories here tonight. But it begs the, it begs the issue of, uh, you know, to me, of precedent. And, uh, and where, where is the precedent for that waiver? Well, um, I heard the waiver discussed here several times this evening. The, the, the thing is, Mr. Dice, that uh, essentially nothing is changing um, uh, the, ever since the Gravelies have used the property. Davis Street is not uh, gated. It's not, there's no barrier to prevent the public from using it. Um, it's not intended as public. It was intended to be Mr. Estefan's driveway uh, and the south 15-foot portion of it has just never been improved with rock or whatever. The power company has a transformer at the end of Davis Avenue. There is a, apparently a, a power line in Davis Avenue uh, that uh, goes to that transformer which we would need to move. Uh, actually, what we're looking for uh, is, is essentially to do the precedent, I'm assuming you would say, would be 
whenever subdivision was granted for lot one Bay Echo subdivision, which is immediately north of this property, you can see where lot one is owned by Miss Gravely. It is a lot of record. We wouldn't need any type of action by the city to get a permit and build a home there. And you see that the cul-de-sac, North Mobile Street, then there was a creation of lot two and lot three to the east mm -hmm. of North Mobile Street. So whenever that occurred, I guess that's your precedent. When um, would, well, yeah, but I mean, when, when would that have occurred? Um, well, I mean, just judging from the age of the yeah, houses. How, how many lots are there now? How many lots? Is it how, the gravity property, is it the, one lot? Right now it's two lots. It's lot one Bay Echo subdivision and lot four Bay Echo subdivision. So I'm assuming, Mr. Dice. Wait, 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 wait. There's, 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 so, a, there's, so a, lot of, there's a lot of doodling on this, so on this flat and it's, uh, and it's a little bit confusing. But lot one is the north lot that runs from the bay over uh, past the cul-de-sac and includes lot one, two, and three. Well, th there's two lot ones. Let me let me clarify that. Yeah, that's right. There's two lot ones. Okay, and there's two two lot twos and two lot threes. That's correct. All right, so we're going to have the uh, north one, two, and three, and the south one, two, and three. And which? All right, the north one is gravelly. Two and three are sold to other people, have houses on them. That occurred years ago. Oh, okay. okay. So they're how they're how, that property is not owned by the gravity. No. The north two and three. The north two and three. The north two and three are other people. Okay. All right. All right. Now go ahead. Then on the south, one, two, and three is all owned by the Gravelys. Right now, it is the description for it is simply lot four Bay Echo subdivision. I can only imagine that at some point prior to the Gravelys owning this. Somebody owned both of those parcels and divided them into four lots. One being the north one, north two, north three, and then they just left lot four as about a four and a half acre lot that ran from the bay all the way back to Davis Avenue. Okay, so lot, the south lot one actually runs from a cul-de-sac all the way to the bay. No, sir. It runs from the bay all the way back to Davis so Avenue. Oh, the south of lot one. The south, what you've got shown right here is the new lot, lot one. New lot one. Yeah. This one, right there, that lot one. Yeah, the lot runs right. from, from the bay Correct. back to the coast side. Correct. Okay, I'm with you. This is 2.9. But, but there is, theoretically, it really is not a lot one yet. Correct. And there's not a lot two and a lot three on the south. Correct. It, right now, it's lot four, Bay Echo subdivision. And what, lot, what you can say, the no, and the north lot one. <coughs> Correct. Those are your four <coughs> lots. The, and the those are the four lots, lots that the Gravelys want to create. Okay, yes. I got you now. Actually, it's not the Gravelys creating the lots. It's the new purchaser wants to create the lots. Miss Gravely owns the property, and that's what started me and this map was to come in here just to say it's been done before can we do it again and then we found a purchaser wanting to do exactly what i was saying that seemed logical mm -hmm. and so they have now hired an engineer and he has actually done the work to divide it okay got it i think if you're looking for a precedent um you know that they did something back years ago wouldn't be it, you know, from one lot to, you know, adding more lots because somebody might do something because it was just one and then you're adding more and more may not be as interested. I think if you're looking for a precedent, though, uh, Jason Tickle was here earlier, and I'm not sure if it was the, with this um, staff or a prior staff, but on County Road 3, um, we approved a subdivision with the gravel drive under one of the um, caveats that were allowed due to the fact that it was, um, you know, people liked the gravel for the speed and also for the water absorption. And you may want to research that one because that might be a precedent of how it was done. But then we didn't approve it, right, with the um, uh, recent subdivision in this area. The name is, I'm having a blank moment with Max. Matt Walcott. 
the, the, the ticket, and, and it's not a matter of what we, what we like or, or, or we don't like in terms of paving or not paving, but certainly, as you well know, it's all about precedent. You don't do for one, you're not willing to do for all. You don't start a precedent, you're not willing to carry on forever. Well, and so the fear is always you do one, and then where where's where's the where's the next line? Well, he, here's the reason why I don't think it's establishing any type of a precedent, and that is that we're not changing anything. We're leaving what is is. We're just asking that. When Mr. Estefan drives his car up and down Davis Avenue going to his house, that we're allowed to drive somebody else's car up and down Davis Avenue going to Lot 4. Or Lot 3, excuse lot me. Three. Lot South 3. South Lot 3. Lot 3. We're not, we're not asking the city of Fairhope to start approving lots on opening new roads and doing this. I mean, we're taking an existing grandfathered if you want to look at it substandard you're if doing you a want subdivision and you're asking us to allow more lots that a subdivision without a paved road and our subdivision regs say you have to have paved roads for new subdivisions this you know the rsa could use the same argument and say that you know just because they're doing 226 lots and y'all are just doing three i mean they could use the same argument well, actually just, we're, we're really only doing one as to davis avenue but you're creating the other two lots will be accessed by, by North Mobile. Well, that's Street. the one I'm discussing is the North Mobile. I think that's the more problematic, probably. North Mobile? Well, if you're looking at doing a subdivision without paved roads, you've got to get through that hurdle. Well, again, in, in that particular uh, instance, Mr. Chairman, um, I guess it's Fairhope Street. If they want to pave it, they can. All I'm telling you is that the residents that live there like it like it is. The, 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 the people who are not involved in this project, Ms. Sanders that lives on this cul-de-sac just to the uh, north, she doesn't want it paved. She said, I'm more than willing to let the city know that I, I, I don't want to see it paved. Where's the nearest pavement? Is it Grand Avenue? Uh, it's, Grand it, Avenue? It's, it's, if, if you consider the cul-de-sac, the south end right. of North Mobile Street, uh -huh. you would go back to the north maybe 80 yards, 100 yards, you pick up the pavement. Oh, is that all? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. We'll just have to look at it next. Mr. Chairman, if I may, very briefly, um, as Mr. Chasen um, stated, uh, there is an active subdivision application uh, submitted to city staff uh, currently under review um, tentatively to appear on the April 1st uh, uh, Planning Commission meeting for consideration. The uh, in brief staff basically asked for legal vetting about access from the two locations. Um, also for the Commission's information, we're, uh, uh, our Development Review Committee meetings, our DRC meetings, are now recorded and are available on the City's YouTube channel. So that is available and is now part of the public record. Um, if it's beneficial or at least more informative, the Planning Commission can certainly attend or watch those uh, recorded. And so some of the more intricate details of this application were discussed during that meeting. Good. And at that meeting, I will say that I think a lot of the focus was not so much on North Mobile Street. And I'm not, Mr. Johnson was here, and I wish he hadn't left, but um, he, he seemed to be comfortable with the fact that the city, even though there's no documentation that that, that cul-de-sac was ever accepted for maintenance by the city, mm -hmm. he says, we've been working on it for years. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, it's public. He says, now as to Davis Avenue, we've been looking and looking and looking, and we certainly find no dedication to the city. Um, it's a 30-foot easement. And at the time of its creation, there's no question that it was, in Mr. Johnson's words, a long driveway. So it's, it's not anything that would ever provide any through traffic um, there will no one will really there's one house along before you get to the gravelly property on the south side and then there's mr. Davis at the at the terminus and then there's this lot at the terminus that's that's the only 
people that, you know, so, so my question, you know, was just, um, can it be considered for what it was created to be, which is just basically a way for Mr. Estefan to get back to the paved road. His house does not front on a paved street. Who maintains the, the unpaved portion of North Mobile Street? City. They do? Yes. In what regard? Just grading and... Is it, is it open dirt? No, it's got some gravel. Okay. And, and, and like I say, I mean, if, if you, if you, you know, not trying to, but the issues that several people have had, uh, Mr. Gibert, uh, there, there are some other people who have complained about some drainage issues there, according to Mr. Johnson, and Ms. Gravely has also made me aware of that. That's the city water coming down North Mobile Street. This proposed division and improvement of this property is going to take care of that problem. So I think it, it although it may be uh, an issue that you have in your mind about granting a waiver for what is already existing and in my opinion grandfathered, but it's also just a step in the direction of utilizing that area and solving some problems, it may lead to the paving eventually of the cul-de-sac. It, it will certainly, in short order, uh, alleviate some drainage issues. Mm -hmm. So um, we're just, you know, it, 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 it would seem to me to be counterproductive not to allow Ms. Gravely to utilize what's been being utilized. I mean, they've taken tractors and when they mow it up and down Davis Avenue, down Mobile Street, it, it's kind of fallen on them to um, do some berming to try to divert water. You got a bluff you're trying to protect. I mean, to build two houses in that location is going to solve a lot of those problems. Now the application- hey, Art, Art, why don't we, we wait till next, we're gonna have city recommendations. We can drive yeah. out there and look at it. We probably ought to yeah. move is, on and we're gonna see this next month. Who are you representing month. an application? Who's, well, who's I, putting the application in? I initiated this informal discussion for the four lot subdivision. But Larry um, uh, Smith is representing two uh, individuals that want to build their personal residence okay. on the property. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Oh. Wayne, you ready? I'll guard that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have two just discussion items. We'll be brief. I know it's getting late. Uh, the first one, as, as you may recall, I think the January meeting, we had a rezoning uh, for the Hope Farm, I think it was called, um, and the request was to go from M1, and you have a memo at your desk, too, if you want to reference this as we're, as we're talking. The request was to rezone approximately 1.18 acres uh, from M1 to B2, General Business District, and the desire was for a restaurant there. Um, and as you may recall from that meeting, there was some discussion about the M1 uh, light industrial district and the, de the depletion of that district and the need for additional light industrial areas um, to be used for the purpose of light industrial. Uh, as you may recall, that was tabled. We were, we were requested to meet with the uh, Fair Oak Industrial Development Board, which we did. Um, we met with them and they also shared the same concern regarding the um, the depletion of the M1 light industrial district. However, they did see the the need to allow, because currently right now M1 does not allow a restaurant or a bar. Uh, and you can see from the table permitted uses, you can see the the uh, the dots are permitted. The, the, uh, if it's blank, it's mean, this, it means that there is no use permitted. And so currently right now, it's not permitted in M1, a restaurant or bar. So however, the um, IDB, National Development Board, did see the a need to make some allowances to allow a restaurant and bar in the M1 in an effort to try to save more M1 property and may, maybe make it a little more viable for some other uses. Mm -hmm. um, so in your memo here, it says that what staff is, is suggesting we do, and if, if, it, if it pleases the uh, Planning Commission, we'll have it on the next 
meeting uh, for to initiate the process of amending the zoning ordinance. But as you can see from my recommendation, we, we recommend that we amend the table of uses to include uh, the symbol that means um, it's allowed with conditions. I mean, a little backwards E symbol. Um, where restaurant and bars are, in, are located in one district, the symbol represents that they're permitted subject to special conditions listed in the ordinance. So what we're suggesting is we permit the bars and restaurants in M1 subject to the following conditions. There'll be no drive-throughs, and restaurant must be farm to table concept with food grown on site used as ingredients. Food grown on site may be sold to the public. However, we do suggest one limitation to this, and that is where, uh, where this may apply to the airport authority. One of, the, one of the discussion items that came up during the, I believe, the IDB meeting was that there is a restaurant, potentially could have a restaurant at the airport. And that's a pretty typical type of use. As it sits today currently, you cannot have a restaurant at the airport. Um, and the airport is zone M1. And so again, our suggestion is to amend the table of permitted uses to allow this with special conditions. And again, no drive-throughs and also that the concept must be a farm to, uh, table to farm to table concept with ingredients being used on site. And also if they want to sell, if they're growing hydroponics, what have you, they'll be able to sell those out uh, at, to retail at the site as well. So that's our request. If, it, if it's- and, uh, and it's not applicable to the airport though. Yes, the airport, the airport authority, what it would be, it would be allowed, a restaurant and bar would be allowed by right at the airport. Right, okay. Um, my one thought, and, and don't want to get into it heavy since we'll talk about it next time, is we might want to think about a um, review by the Board of Adjustments. Mm -hmm. uh, may not, but my only thought is if we say carte blanche that they can go in, you know, a lot of the thought is, oh, it's M1, it's M1, it's M1, who are you going to disturb? Well, you know, the number one thing we're supposed to look out for is, is public safety. And if you, you know, put restaurants and bars in an area that doesn't have adequate parking and sidewalks, you know, an area thought of as M1, mm -hmm. a lot of those steel buildings, you don't have much parking. You know, you have 8, 12, 14 employees there all day and an 18-wheeler or two come mm -hmm. in the right. back mm -hmm. that, you know, might want to just make sure that there's some purview that, you know, you don't have people walking down, you know, inadequate sidewalks and parking down roads and around. You mm -hmm. know, we've had, you know, with, with a, a number of those buildings, we've had those issues with people parked pell-mell and crossing the streets. And that's my only thought with the restaurants, just make sure there's enough parking. And, Mr. Chairman, I, in one area. It, and as far as parking goes, they have to meet the ordinance as far as parking goes. But as far as how this is approved in the table of permitted uses, I, have, I, I don't really have an objection if you want to have that. Uh, with the same conditions, but go to the Board of Adjustments for additional review. If that's what that's that's what pleases the Planning Commission, I think that's a good suggestion, and we can. Um, it's, that's just an off the cuff. Yeah. So I may. Well, I mean, th this this is time to kind of vet that out because if we do that, then we need to advertise it that way. I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, we have a lot of things that go to the, the Board of Adjustments for review uh, that are use related. Um, I think that's a good suggestion. So if it pleases the Planning Commission, we can we can make that adjustment and advertise it that way. So when it comes back to you in April. It will, it will say that. It won't, it won't. If we did that, we could probably broaden it up a little bit and not require just farm to table, and we could probably just broaden it a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to suggest, it feels a little, I mean, I, I'm the one who suggested this, but I, my intent was really a little bit looser that just includes some mm -hmm. form of production, sort of like the, the coffee grinding or the, the beer making, that we that it includes a production component. And, and then maybe separately that we might consider some forms of agriculture to be production and and form and appropriate for M1. Okay. It's two separate things. Sure. We will make that, those uh, th those additions to this and bring it back to the, so when you'll see it again, it will be an actual advertised amendment and it'll go from the Planning Commission to the City Council. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, who's, who has the next one, Mike? Somebody needs to go. It's getting late. Oh, the next item we have um, is about waterfront lots and lot definitions. Just kind of making some uh, routine text amendments uh, to add a waterfront lot definition. Uh, we currently do not have a standard what is a waterfront lot, uh, where is the front lot line, where is the rear lot line, uh, and then that kind of comes into play with accessory structures on where they can then be located. Mm -hmm. uh, so every now and again we get the issue of, well, I'm on the bay, my front yard is the water side, where currently, you know, your yard is what front is, what fronts upon a publicly paved, maintained road, as 
we have harped on that uh, several times uh, this evening. So that would be your front, which then makes your rear the waterfront, but the way the Fairhope community has been uh, developed and houses have been built, that is kind of the style that has accrued. So uh, kind of what we're wanting to do is add an accessory structure, may not be located in the front yard of a lot, except that on waterfront lots, accessory structures may be located between the principal building and the waterfront property line, but not within the required front yard setback. So we're allowing for them to build, to put, you know, a little shed or a little, whatever accessory building they may want actually in their front yard, but we're limited it to not in the building setback. So it's still, you know, close to that five foot uh, property line uh, buffer where it's not right up next to their house. What's the, ter what's the thought there? Of having the accessory structures in the front, in the front yard. Everybody's going to want their garage it's really in the back. The well, well it, it's, it's, it's allowing them, it, it's giving really them the, the opportunity. The front yard's facing the back. That's right. Right, and yeah, that's, 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 that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying, put it in the front yard. You, yeah, they're allowing it. No, they're they're allowing it in the front yard, which we're giving, is the base get, giving them giving them the option to put it if, so for instance, if somebody was building their house and wanted to orientate it actually towards the road instead of the bay, it gives, then gives them the option to put their accessory structure in what would be rear yard, but not, I'm trying. Well, okay, let, let's take practicality, and, and I don't want to belabor this right now. Let's take practicality. Yes, sir. If, however many lots there are in the city of Fairhope, yep. on the Fairhope Police Jurisdiction or Planning Jurisdiction, from Montrose all the way down to Big Mouth, mm -hmm. I bet you there is not one house that fronts out on the street or that's on the bank. I, I would I would agree that there are not very many lots that I do. I don't think there's any. Because, the, 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 because of the, the depth of the how some of those lots can be, your house, if you build it way far back, you have a lot of room from your house to the lot. So a lot of people have different sheds that they use for storage of equipment for maybe their fishing rods, fishing poles, okay. things that are closer to the water to get to them if they don't have, if they don't want it out over a pier over the water. And, and it's just a suggestion. If you're in Point Clear, you're in Montrose, and you're in the county zoned areas, the waterfront is the front yard. Already. The waterfront is the front yard. It's always been that way. It's always been that way. Yeah. So well, it's that way in Fairhope too, isn't it? No, no it's not. That's where, that's what we're talking about. No, that, so if you're in the county, are you allowed to build an accessory building in your front yard? No, it's got to be in the rear. So I kind of wonder why we would allow it. If, but if but but the, but the front yard is, I mean, so. Is the water side. Yeah. Is the water side, right. I, I agree. Yeah. Right. I mean, I. I no, no. I, what, I would pref what I would rather have is that you can't build an accessory structure on the bay side of your house. Yeah. The front yard. If you can't well, the base side is the front yard. Instead of all this, why don't we just change the definition and say in Fairhope the front yard is the waterfront well, that's, of the that's house. What it says. This, this, was, this was a text amendment to the accessory structure uh, definition. The waterfront, actual waterfront lot definition is any lot or parcel adjacent to Mobile Bay, which limits it from not being able to be on Fly Creek, Rock Creek, any other fish river or something, some odd, a lake or something. So just lots that are on. Uh, there, Mobile there, Bay. Take Fly Creek now as a prime example. Mm -hmm. There's not a house anywhere on Fly Creek all the way to the marina from my house, which is the furthest house up the creek. Right. There's not one house on either side of the creek where the front of the house faces the creek. They all face the highway. Yeah, but they're right. but they're garage. But that doesn't really matter as much as where the garage is. Well, some and of the garages around the back, and some of them come in. If, front. Some of them are if I on could the add other that, okay. Uh, uh, this is a rule that's kind of been. Um, okay. The city has allowed this in the past, and we're just trying to memorialize it in an order. In, 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 in trying trying change. to get it in writing. Right. That if, if, if you don't allow, like, you know, we're just trying to make sure it's. And if you're stuck on the accessory structure use part. We don't, we don't have to change that. We can make it where they still have to. This was just giving them an avenue if somebody was to not build, like I said, there aren't very many of them, but if they did have a weird shaped lot and they wanted to have a smaller shed or something to get the option, we can take that out if 
Do yeah, you, the planning commission let, doesn't let me, feel. Let me just tell you where the, pro the problem's going to come is the next door. It's going to come from the next door neighbor. When you get somebody, I mean, think about it. The reason you've got a bayfront lot and they, and they charge what they charge for a bayfront lot is the view. And all of a sudden, you got a next door neighbor that decide and, and his house is here and your house is here. Right. And here's your view. And he puts a, he go he he's mad at you. He's going to put him in an equipment shed. Right out there in front oh, yeah. of your place. But there are people fighting about where, trying, where they build houses right now anyway. That's, that's what we're trying to alleviate. Right now, is, right now, the way our ordinance is written, they are required to do it. Because They're required the to put it in their rear yard. This will give them the option to to not do that. But so in the rear yard, you just the said they're, they're required to put it in the rear yard. Because, but you're saying right, that the because, rear yard is the base side. Because we're turning it around now with this definition. Why don't we just so, write it and just rather than change accessory structures, just change the definition of the front yard yeah. and then leave the definition of the of yeah. accessory structures the same. Uh, that's right. And then people come Make it real simple. Accessory structures like they always do anyway. They can ask for a yep. variance if yeah. they want to do it yeah. differently. And you can literally just say Ooh. waterfront. Yeah. It would be, so it would be, it would, we will be, yard. we will be lynched when they start building accessory structures on the base side of their houses and blocking their neighbor's views. Well, that, that's where it was, uh, the way, the way it's written is that it cannot be within the required front yard setback. I mean, that it has to be, I think I may have misspoke earlier. It would have to be within the, if the front setback was 35 feet then that setback it would have to be 35 feet off of the water it would be in the same spot that a house there should never be an accessory structure between the main house and the waterfront i mean that that's more of a no no than having one between the house and the road yeah um yeah so, I, I, so we I all support flipping it where I mean, from what i'm hearing everybody supports saying yes the water is your front yard but we don't want to make any changes to allowing accessory well, structures in the front, yard. Your front yard and i think you got it fixed then that works for us that's not a problem kiss system baby. that's what I, I agree and then also for just uh tidying up to make sure that none of the terms uh get crossed uh for the front lot line it will read on an interior lot, the lot line abutting a street, on a corner lot, the shorter lot line abutting a street, on a through street, the lot line abutting the street providing the primary means of access to the lot, and on a flag lot, the interior lot line most parallel to and nearest to the street from which access is, is obtained, or on a waterfront lot, the lot abutting uh, the water. Okay. Right. Uh, front yard definition, again is just a yard extending the full width of the lot and situated between the front lot line and the building line projected to the sidelines of the lot mm -hmm. uh, front each definition the area of a lot made up of the front building facade and any area between the front building facade and front lot line mm -hmm. rear yard a yard extending the full width of the lot and the building line of the main building projected to the sidelines of the lot on all corner lots, the rear yard shall be at the opposite end of the lot from the front yard. So that was most of that was just tidying up, changing what may have said mm -hmm. frontage to front lot line to make sure everything was in and it was kind of cohesive and not uh, contradictory to each other, which before yeah. whatever. And then that was the small minor changes that we had for that. But we'll take off the uh, accessory structures. We'll leave that. If you put accessory structures in the front yards of the of the uh, bay lots on the bay side, I want all of y'all cell numbers, and I want your uh, 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 and 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 uh, where you live, so I can give them to everybody. Yeah, I don't think we need to limit. I am not the author I think we should put of this proposal. Bay, um, you know, Fish River, Cow Creek. Well, no, if the, the water. no, 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 oh, any lot or parcel adjacent to Mobile Bay. Gotcha. Uh, because if if you live in just say for instance a neighborhood that has a lake on it and you're on that your lot abuts that then you could technically say that you're a waterfront lot well, and I, it, I it can be manipulated to change it to navigable water what is navigable water it's just commercial navigable just change it to commercial navigable water and that would include fly creek fish river it would include portions all of fly creek right. part of fly creek is not navigable you don't want all of fly creek you don't want up by where the well that's that's what i was saying it 
If you say commercially nav navigable water, there's a definition of that, and that would get you what you want 98% of the time. And that's better than we do most of the time. <laughs> Usually we're at 97.8. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adjourn. Do I have a second? <laughs> no, wait, there's wait. further discussion. <laughs> yes, oh, sorry, just one small request. With all the, with everything we were talking about tonight, with about community participation and and all the questions, and we always hear that I'm I'm 350 feet away from this subdivision, and I didn't know about it. Could we could we start a routine at the beginning of these meetings? Possibly of listing all the different ways people can can they get on the Facebook page? How can they sign up to get the notifications? And it's, it'll be redundant, but if we could just say it at the beginning of every meeting. I and can, kind of, I mean, we, we we must follow state law when it comes to notification. So yeah. we we got 300 feet because state law has required 300 feet for years. When you start really going beyond that. I think you're getting some area, some trouble areas. So I wasn't trying to go there, but if we yeah. could, if we could continue to broadcast all the public right. avenues that you can, you can sign up for the emails, you can sign mm -hmm. up for the notifications. I think that would be helpful. Right. Well, instead of saying it, isn't this thing being broadcast? Every meeting is uh, is live. And and instead for of the saying last it, several then why don't we just put a because they have to have a they have to have a that, uh, you know just on the, on television what, if you if you, if you do that if you want more information well, about well, that, well, 90 percent of these things now that we have these meetings out there required you know 90 percent of these are going to be you know taken care of it's just sometimes you get to the situations to where you know it's hard to notify because you know just go look at your property tax maps mm -hmm. and it's you know our notifications are only as good as the tax maps and the sign we put out there yeah. You know, garbage in, garbage out. And I get a lot of returned certified mails sure. where it they reject it. They won't pick it up. They yeah, send it back. Don't take People it. are distrustful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, usually right. usually certified mail is bad news. Yeah. You know, yeah. when that man sends yeah, you your money, he just sends you the checks. Well, that's why it, just continuing to reinforce that there are other ways to sign up for the email, to sign sure. to check post if we could keep publicizing that it seems like it would be helpful. well in 2019 mail is not the best way to notify people but we had to follow state law now there are some states there that, that are sort of amending their public notice requirements mm -hmm. uh, to where it makes you can do it on do it electronically you can do some postings those kind of things but mail will never work I mean I can tell you you might get half not of them. Anymore, All right, I've got a motion and a second. I'm scared to call the question because Richard made the motion, but all in favor say aye. aye. <laughs>